Um, okay. There he is. Okay. To, to, to hold on one second. I do you have the thing, the reading thing pulled up right now? I am a disaster. Apparently. I do, so I can. Okay, sorry. Yeah, no worries. No worries. I, I had it pulled up and then I moved my windows all around but I can certainly do it. No worries. Now to readjust all the windows. <clears throat> okay. So the, and I have to try to remember what you, you do because it's been a while. Um, the meeting, I guess, is, is called to order <laughs> and pursuant to chapter 20, of uh, the acts of 2021 this meeting will be conducted via remote means members of the public who wish who wish to access the meeting may do so via zoom or by telephone um, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological meeting mean so welcome to the community safety and social justice committee meeting of december 7th um and we um have any announcements i guess to make are there any i just wanted to ask I, I, did, are we recording it did we yes yes okay cool. the meeting is recorded um did we say the time oh it is 606 thank you we'll get this eventually the no, maybe part of it <laughs> maybe i tried to be formal and then there was resistance so i dropped <laughs> the formality all right so are there any announcements to make at the uh beginning of this i and philip can go first okay i just have a quick one uh human rights day is on the 10th and the human rights commission is doing a candlelight um Vigil on the town common at 4 30 this Saturday. Great. So and the vigil will be for human oh, for the human rights day. And I think your guest speaker this year uh is Magdalena Gomez, that's act, the poet. That's that's actually um Am Amherst Amnesty, and I believe their event is oh. from <laughs> one to three at the Jones Library. That one I'm not too positive on, but that's what I believe that is. But yeah, so the Human Rights Day, we'll be reading the articles of the Human Rights um, Declaration. So it's a good grounding work to go into the new year also, if are interested. Great. Leave it to me to mix those up. So, but your event is on the 10th and it's on the town common, the vigil. Correct. 4.30. 4.30. Thank you. Any others? Allegra, you had something? Um, I had two things. Um, and I know Dr. Shavaz, you already mentioned this, um, but I just wanted to make sure members of the committee and members of the public were aware that the Community Safety Working Group had received <coughs> the Gene Haggerty Award from Amherst Media. Um, so that to yes. our members who are present, Absolutely. Um, congratulations, very well deserved. Um, and I don't know if this is an announcement or perhaps goes under the, you know, things that we didn't have 48 hours in advance, but I did um, want to make the committee aware that um, there was a press release yesterday from the police department that there were three new officers hired um, at the Amherst Police Department. So um, I just wanted to make people aware of that. And that is it for me, I believe. Thank you. So let me let me ask, can we discuss that when we talk about some of the other stuff around the police? Because I guess it was all those records or whatever. So I'm absolutely just yeah. we can discuss that in there. Okay. Absolutely. Miss Pat, we are doing announcements right now. Welcome. And um Dr. Fricke, we're doing announcements. Do you all have any? Um, not right now. Okay. Fricke. Okay. All right. So we'll continue. So um, the agenda, let's see, can show, oh, are you hosting or is Pam hosting? 
Oh. Uh, Earl and I are listed as uh, co-hosts. Um, I can. Um, yeah, I was just going to show the like agenda. I, uh, pardon? I was just going to show the agenda. Sure, I, I can make you a. Um, Thank you. Nope. Okay. Thank you. So now I have everything up here. Um, this is our agenda for folks, um, just to be reminded of what's going on tonight. Uh, we do have minutes to approve, three sets of minutes to approve, public comment, um, member reports, um, and CRESS and DEI update. So this is a, a rather lengthy uh, area. Um, definitely want to get to the ARPA because we put that discussion off uh, several times. And then of course the resident oversight board. Um, list of consultants and contractors so quite a bit in town manager goals and report from youth okay so let's go ahead and get into it we'll stop screen sharing here and um d just for a clarifying question in terms yeah. of the agenda so when is it that we'll talk about what transpired in the town council the last time? Is that town manager goals? I mean, I'm, I'm just a little bit confused. Right. Um, is that so, it? It could be within that. So it's the, when you're talking about what transpired, which town council meeting, the one that we attended? Yeah, because at the bottom, the very end of all of the, I guess, police records or whatever, there was the, um, you know, what passed in the town council, yes. the, the motion and stuff and so obviously I'm hoping we can talk about that because that would be you know we kind of need to like follow up on what happened you know on July 5th and and that was their response quote unquote agreed so it's not a formal item within uh the agenda and it it should you know it should be so um it's just that was a lot to fit in it could come under you know other topics or we can decide to make that, uh, you know, more to prioritize that under four, under, you know, A through H. So what do we think about that uh, group that we need a discussion pertaining to uh, the last motion that the town council passed or discussed rather? Would that discussion just be kind of like our thoughts on the motion that they passed? Or maybe yeah, well, it's not just that. I mean, we need to discuss like, okay, you know, we need to hold them to what they're saying. And there is a lot of things that they changed in it in terms of the demands we made. I mean, you know, the pressure needs to continue basically. That's what I'm saying. I'm just like, yeah. just because they passed that motion doesn't mean that we go back to sleep and be like, la, 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 la it's fine. You know, we need to really dissect what they passed and see where the difference were in terms of our demands, which they 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 really kind of, you know, took out a bunch of stuff and right. what really this means, right? We need to dissect it and so, be on top of it. So let me make a, a suggestion because we do have to approve the minutes. Let's go ahead and approve the minutes. And then um, under, after public comment, um, member reports would include uh, DEI and CRESS because there's going to be a CRESS and DEI update anyway. So maybe we could have that discussion under number three. How do folks feel about that? Yay, nay. Sounds like people want to unpack it. So um, where do we think that should go? I think it should come on that order. Well, it's going to be pretty far down. So as we get close to, you know, maybe an hour and a half, we could check in with one another and decide, you know, is there one of these things in the agenda we can push to a next meeting and have that discussion. So can I check in with you, Deborah, at that point? 
So if I forget, Allegra or someone else or Deborah, please remind yeah. me. No, I will. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, because since it will be a number six and we have like a lot on the agenda, we will yeah. never get to it. So um, yeah, we definitely need to do a check in. I'm thinking in an hour's time and then. You Sounds know, good. Hour and a half. Let's, okay. let's, let's do that. Thank you. And um, also, uh, some of the agenda items will be really quick, um, like okay. the BIPOC night report will be just coming that I will make. So it won't, it won't okay. take too long. Okay. And so, just, ahead. I would say probably the idea number, number D, letter D um, for listening session, I think it was just to follow up on a public comment that we received last week and like maybe plan for the future, but not like have a full fledged plan tonight. So that could be pretty quick too. Okay, so we might get through it pretty quickly, mm -hmm. hopefully. <laughs> All right, well, um, I see, I'm looking at our meeting minutes, trying to get to them here. Okay, August. So y'all want me to show them? Yes. So we can approve these minutes and get them, get them over with. Okay, so this is um, our meeting in August. Let me try to make it a little larger, move things around. I never have enough screens. Okay, here we go. Can you all see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a question, Pam. So I looked at the three different sets of minutes and not to say that they all have to be consistent all the time. This um, set has um, the public comment um, uh, like their names. And I think the last set of minutes uh, only refers to what they said and not their names. I'm not sure that's important since they're recorded, but um, I, you know, maybe just some consistency on on which, you know, either their names or no names. So, uh, Jen and I have been alternating taking minutes, and okay. um, and we do we have very different styles, but we'll try to work to be more consistent. So, yeah. um, I think that. I'm, not, I'm actually not sure who wrote these minutes, whether they were written by her or by me. Okay. Um, I, I, I think I tend probably not to include names. So I my guess would be that she might have written these ones, but I'm not sure. Okay. Well, these are August, so they're pretty early. So yeah, she probably wrote these. Right. And maybe in October, yeah, you might have written those because no names appear, I think, under public comment. And I appreciate how this is represented in terms of the questions of the discussion. <clears throat> it looks pretty, pretty accurate. If I may, if I may comment on the minutes. Yes, please. So thank you to Ms. Young and uh, and Jennifer, uh, for the minute, um, this is good. The only comment I have is the one regarding the Mandela Foundation. It's a lot better, it's good, but I mm -hmm. never mentioned, I believe I never mentioned 
that UMass would have reached out to Nigerian community because I did not know that UMass was involved in the first place. I was referring to the town manager's report that I read. So I don't recall the town manager mentioning UMass involvement. So in my comments at uh, CSSJC meeting, I don't believe I mentioned UMass would have reached out to Nigerian community. So that's the only stuff I have for the minutes. Wait, that's in August, September, or October, Ms. Pat? So that's September. Just okay. Yeah. All right. So we're on August right now. I know. Oh, okay. All right. I, I, I was just making general, you know. Okay. Of what I read. Yeah. Okay. All I right. Yep. Okay. So are the August minutes okay for everyone? Okay for me. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. I'll be, but I mean, but you had brought up the thing about the name. So are, are we removing the names of people that, that, spoke during the public comment or oh, what's the situation? So what would we like to see? Would we like to see our community represented in terms of their names? Is that helpful? Yes. Okay. All right. So if you if you could, Pam, um, in the and we're not there yet. It's it's the October minutes from what I recall that do not have uh, public comment names. So this one reflects names um, and the October meeting does not. So we haven't gotten there yet. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so we need a motion to approve the August minutes. I move to approve the August minutes. I second it. Okay, all in favor? Can y'all actually voice aye since I'm not? Aye. Okay, great. All right, it passes. Thank you. Let's go to September. And Ms. Pat, do you know which um, uh, page that is on for the September meeting? Um, keep scrolling down. I thought the minutes were much, much improved, was written very well. It's okay. just um, keep going down. Yeah. Sure. Uh, keep going down. It's, I, think, I believe it's Here, right Ms. here. Oh, mm, no. no. Mm. Uh, go go back up. Okay. Sorry. No worries. I believe it's before your post presentation. Okay. Here. Keep going. Hmm. Ah. Is that September? Are we looking at September, October? So this is September. So maybe that was in October. D, it's in September. You can go it's to September. Go to line September. go to line item number six. Post six. Oh, maybe no. it's no, it's not in September then. Which one was I looking at? I mean, we mm, then let's go to October then. But I, I don't. I know that they. Yep, it's they it's October. Been. It's October, Miss. Okay, so so oh, let's, this is December. This is December. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So let's deal with September and get these out of the way if we can. Are there any comments, additions, um, subtractions <laughs> uh, to? the minutes for September. So let's see. So the police department in compliance. Okay. Okay. 
So I don't, I don't have to... any issue with it and I'll motion to approve September's minutes. Second. Great, so we have a second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, and aye. So uh, September minutes pass, thank you. All right, so October. Actually, I think the confusion is we had two meetings in September, oh. October, something like that. Do we not have two meetings? Um, okay, so let's see October. I know one of the months we had the- We had two meetings, like yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Okay, so That's here is October 12th meeting, set of meetings. Mm -hmm. And it looks like this is the one that doesn't have the name for the public commenter. Oh, okay. This one? Yeah. So. so this might be the one also for the, the Mandela Foundation or something? Yes, it is. Um, I think it's this one. It is on the last page, the second, or the, the, yeah, the. Okay, so real quick, Pam, thank you for including what um, Deborah Ferrer said, because I think that reflects more accurately what that conversation was like um, yeah. on record. So yeah. thank you. So I, for... I didn't revise these minutes. Um, I've been oh. out of the office for the last three weeks. Uh, okay. They were revised by Jen. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you to, to Jen for including that, because this is what I saw on the recording or yeah. heard on the recording. Yeah, it, it definitely is more yeah. accurate. I agree. <laughs> Okay, so this is the mm -hmm. where it says would have appreciated if somehow UMass or someone reach out to the Nigerian community. What I said, I recall saying was I, I would have you know appreciated that our you know somebody from our town would have reached out to Nigerian community. But I don't believe I mentioned UMass. I could be wrong, but. I don't recall, you know, mm -hmm. mentioning UMass. So mm -hmm. above the at the first line, there's something saying, has the town done any research to the Nigerian community in Amherst as a simple, or this would be a simple courtesy. And then the second, there was the re response and then the second statement. Um, Okay, so if we could, what's the what's the addition or retraction? So the we'll retraction know. is the UMass. That's all. Okay, yeah, so that's it. Pam, if it's possible to just revise that to take out UMass, so it's it's okay to as it reads. Thanks, the town council and town manager, but would have appreciated if some someone would have reached out to the Nigerian community. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I'm wondering who made, I am not aware of a program where the town is working with Nigerian government. That was my comment. I right. Think. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that? That was Dr. Young. 
Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. Okay, because she wrote the minutes. Okay. That makes sense. Yep. So is it okay for it to go this way or are you just, you want the UMass taken out? And I'm not recalling that I, I used the word UMass because I didn't even know that UMass was involved, which okay. is still fine that they were involved. Yeah. But I based my comments on what I read from the town manager's report. Sure. That, okay. she, that he submitted to the town council. Okay. So. All right. But it's a, it's a good minute. I like it. Thank you. Okay. So both Jen, Jen and Ms. Young. Okay. Good job. And Phil, does the, the paragraph reflecting your comments seem accurate? Yes. Yes, they do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Yes, Pam, if, if it's possible for the minutes for uh, this October meeting to be revised with the UMass taken out of Ms. Pat's comment, but then here um, if possibly to put the, um, the people who said their comments, um, who is it? A member of the public expressed concerns regarding truthfulness or, or what have you. If they have to identify themselves in the you know in the public meeting and it's on the recording so it'd be great to have that reflected uh within the written text so i will um ask uh jen to review the recording okay. to check on the accuracy of the um minutes that she's recorded them she generally <coughs> listens to the recording um and you know to check for accuracy so i'll just make sure that she does that and adds the names of the members of the uh, of the public great thank you so then with that said um we could oh sorry we could approve these as with the with those changes or we could table um this set of meetings for next meeting i think we should approve it with those changes okay, i mean so we'll spend half an hour trying to approve minutes uh, yes i I'm, that's why i'm i'm offering two <laughs> two yeah. ways to go about it so can someone make a motion um with that uh with those changes included So I go ahead to approve the minutes with the noted amendments to strike UMass from Ms. Pat's comment and to include the person's name instead of a member of the public under second public comment. Second. Okay. Um, and all in favor? Aye. Yeah. Yeah. Aye. Okay. Uh, so moves. We have all three sets of minutes approved. Yeah. <laughs> all Thank right. you. Thank you. Let me get out of that. All righty. So now we are back to our agenda and mm -hmm. public comment. So do we have any members in the audience interested in making comments tonight? We have, yes. So, are, can you bring them in, Pam? How does that, I don't think of that. Right. Thank you. Hi everyone, can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. I apologize for the background noise. I am at my second job cleaning outdoors right now. But I wanted to one, thank you all for this incredible work. And two, I have um, just a concern and I'm not sure if this is the appropriate meeting to bring it up at, 
but um, I'm really looking forward to the DEI and CRESS update. And I have been catching up on the aftermath of the July 5th incident. And I guess for me, one thing that I hope is covered at the DEI update is moving forward with DEI reports and how they will be written. Um, I am just now caught up with everything. And after reading Mr. Williams' um, email, I was a little bit thrown off, I guess. And I feel like a little taken back that that wasn't included in the report. And I'm wondering if there'll be procedures that will allow for stuff like that to be included in reports going forward, or if there's a staffing issue and more support is needed at the DEI department. Thank you. Thank you. So we're, no one else I can see has their hand up at this time. Okay, so um, under member reports, again, I'm assuming that member reports means CRESS and DEI. However, we have that under item four. No, usually member reports is just us. Like if we yeah. have any reports in terms of things that we've done over the past couple of weeks. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. definitely um, Amherst Media celebrated CSWG and their great accomplishment through the Community Service Award, Jean Haggerty Award that is given every year. And I'm a member of the board of uh, Amherst Media. So we were very proud. Once actually CSWG was nominated, no one else put up a nomination. <laughs> it's like, it's no contest. Of course they should get it. Um, and just to you know uh, reiterate um, that, the work that you all have done is not only historic, um, it's important, it's important. And I think Mindy Dom uh, really laid that out very nicely about the importance of this work for the state of Massachusetts as a model. So I'm just really honored to be in this community with, with this group of folks um, who are willing to devote their time and energy and intellect to building a better community. And just wanna say, you know, lift Miss Pat up. This is her second time of getting the Jean Haggerty Award. She she received it, was it two years ago from Amherst Media? 19, 2019. Oh, okay, 2019. 2019. So you continue to do good work and the work of the people and we so appreciate it. Any other member reports? Ah, Pam. Would you mind spelling the name of the award? The, the, Certainly. The person is named after. Yes. Um, so Jean Haggerty was a community uh, member, community activist, also a member of the board of Amherst Media at one time. J-E-A-N is the first name. Haggerty, H is in Henry for Haggerty, A-G-G-E-R-T-Y, I believe. I think there's two Gs. So I just have a quick comment. Um, again, I'm very grateful that MS Media recognized CSWG. Um, I think I have to say what I've heard and what I observe at the event is that we did not see some of our, actually our town, administrators did not show up to support CSWG. That is very disappointing. And these are the group of people that will go to other events. I also, um, we did not have anyone from town council that attended, at least to support Alicia Walker. What is that saying to, the committee that worked hard to produce two departments to recommend several recommendations. I just want to put it out there because people are talking about it. It was very disappointing. Yeah, and I, I'll, I'll just make one quick comment too, just to add to it, you know, which I agree with what Ms. Pat just said, because I also took note of that. 
But also to say that CSWG uh, was upon our recommendation that we have CSSJC, you know, and I know we, we keep on just saying that they created the two uh, departments, but we're, we're who we are because of CSWG and we're meeting because of CSWG. So I think that that needs to be put on record um, too. Um, and then also obviously the oversight board and a, a bunch of those other recommendations, the Youth Empowerment Multicultural Center, that still all has to be, you know, um, we need to keep the pressure to make sure that all of those recommendations, especially those recommendations applicable to the police, um, you know, one of them, which we're, we're gonna talk about later, which is, you know, not hiring any more police members, which was one of our recommendations, mm -hmm. which is totally being disregarded. Um, are also uh, going to be taken in, into consideration. So, um, yeah, obviously, you know, happy that we were acknowledged because usually, you know, the work that we do isn't acknowledged. But so I was, thank you, Amherst Media, uh, for acknowledging us and doing that. But, you know, the work is far from over. Um, there's still a lot, a lot of work to be done. It wasn't, and also, it was not announced in the MS Town website. And I know that is, you know, some stuff going on between MS Media and our town government, but um, such an important occasion, it wasn't announced there. The Chamber of Commerce, they have their newsletter that goes out, they announce a bunch of stuff. And yet this event wasn't announced. So go figure what is happening in this town. If you don't fall in, they, you know, you're canceled in this town. I have to say it. I have to name it. Thank you, both Deborah and Miss Pat. Um, that folks were missed. I know that there were a couple of regrets from town council members who were yes. at, you know, uh, a conference and uh, different things. So, but they were missed, visibly uh, missed. Yeah. Well, and especially the town um, staff, you know. Oh my goodness. I didn't see anyone from town staff. <laughs> there was no outreach to CSWG say, oh, by the way, I can't make it. You know, I know this is happening. There was no acknowledgement from the town. It's it's very disheartening to say the list. Yeah. So thanks to, to Mindy Dom for those proclamations yes. and um, for recognizing how this work reverberates. Um, throughout the state and the region. Yeah. Um, any other member reports? Okay, all righty. Let's uh, continue. So under um, number four, action and discussion items, um, we have updates from CRESS and DEI. So whoever wants to go first. Your call, Pamela. I should, you want me to go? Okay. Um, so we are uh, fully staffed with responders uh, for the first time since about halfway through training. Uh, Tia Atwell joined the team. Um, she's currently still living in Adams, so uh, about an hour uh, commute in. So we're, we're working to get her uh, closer to town. Uh, really fantastic hire. Um, town got really lucky. We've gotten really lucky with all the responders that they've shown up. Um, really competitive group of folks. We had some um, some folks with really unique backgrounds apply for the position. Pamela was on the hiring committee for that, um, but we ultimately feel like we made the right decision. Uh, one of the key components she brings to the team is that she is our youngest member, um, and recognizing that in serving a community with a large uh, range of ages, um, she's 20 years old, so having someone that age on the team allows us to um, communicate with folks in different ways, and she's had some real value. Um, we're in the middle of the work, so the thing I'm really stressing to the responders now is to take care of themselves. I'm trying to model that myself. Uh, I'm about nine months into 60-hour weeks, so I'm, I'm, I'm a little uh, little sleepy. Sorry I didn't make the event, but uh, really having to prioritize um, some rest at this point to, to make sure I can keep going. Um, if you get a chance, uh, WWLP wrote a story. A couple of local news outlets will. We we were awarded a grant. Um, it doesn't actually come with any fiscal things, so uh, that should make it uh, easier. Um, but it allows us to work with seven other municipalities and the uh, um, Council of State Governments uh, Justice Equity Group. 
um, which is really allowing us to look at communities that are actually similarly sized to us. Um, there hasn't been a work group like this yet. Um, I was I spent an hour on a call with uh, some Royal Mounted Canadian police. There's a Canadian community involved in this. Um, and just hearing about the differences in, in just health systems and the way that that impacts things is, is pretty big. Um, folks saw the vaccine clinic that happened at Bangs on Monday. Uh, we were able to support the town in getting about 463 people vaccinated. Um, and we'll be at the Survival Center on the 16th and potentially another clinic after that. So um, that required our whole team. Uh, I'm pretty proud of the way that my folks handled that. Uh, we were able to deal with some tricky situations that day uh, in a particularly uh, smooth way. Um, we're in, ramping up for January. Um, we're now in some conversations about what our next steps look like. Um, the really good news is we will be able to be dispatched. The technology is here. Um, we're in a pretty intensive training process. Um, just a heads up, it looks like there may be some days in December in which we're not able to respond to calls because we need to make sure that we're we're really well trained in not just the radios, um, but the electronic record system that we're procuring this month. So uh, we'll announce that uh, on, on the website and uh, work to make sure we get that information out to folks. Um, yeah, the work is going. Uh, I don't know what else to say, except everybody's really stepping up. Um, I'm really proud of the team we have. Um, you know, we're not perfect. I would say the the big thing we're lacking is experience. And there's no, I don't know, a shortcut to get that. Um, and we had a really successful call um, with a local uh, service provider um, that actually involved fire and police and, and kind of stepping in and stepping back and um, something that had been really theoretical for us for a long time. Uh, but on the scene, we were able to handle it pretty smoothly, and um, it ended up in someone not needing to be transported anywhere but back to where they stayed, which was, uh, we we thought, a big success. So, um, yeah, I, I, I could and do talk about this for hours and hours. I will try to keep it brief. I know you all have a big agenda, so if there's any questions. Oh, and we have our cars ordered. Um, so uh, now we're on the state list. If, if anybody wants to send good vibes, we will take all of them. We have two cars coming. Um, and as soon as they get in town, we will get them running as soon as we can. So I have a couple of questions. Um, so, so you said there's gonna be some days that you all are not gonna be responding um, because you'll be you know, kind of focused on, on other, um, I guess training. you said. Yeah, some training and things like that. So what happens um, when you all are not responding? Because obviously I get concerned that <laughs> what's what's plan B, <laughs> you know, in That's terms of like, you know, so the police are the ones that are going to be responding. I mean, have police gotten any new training? Has any of their people gone to some of the training that you all went to to see if they're able to respond to some yeah. of these issues in an adequate way? Because then the community is just out of luck, I guess in terms of for these days. Um, so yeah, the, what's plan B? And then I have more questions, but let's start with yeah. that one. So uh, I, I guess the answer is there, there would be brief windows of time where we weren't able to respond. There's tw 12 of us. Um, so that, you know, I, with, with the size of our department, we're always gonna be a COVID outbreak, uh, an act of God away from not being able to respond to things. Uh, I can't and won't speak to police training. I, I don't, I'm not involved in any of those conversations. But that's what I'm saying. I, I think though, <laughs> what, well, okay, let me let me say what I, I need to say. I think you need to be involved in some of those conversations. Pamela needs to be involved in some of those conversations with the police to say in terms of what's going to happen, it, it, you know, when you all, and I get it, right? Because you all are only, you know, so many people and you guys, you know, fall sick, you did, da, 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 da. But a plan B needs to happen so that the community is not out in, in, in bad terms you know, when you all are not present. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is I I, I would like you all to to, to to figure, you know, or to think something up, something in regards to it so that, yeah. you know, the community is not impacted because obviously July 5th is a very real example of what happens when, you know, police that don't have adequate training uh, or, or willfulness, you know, what happens when they go, you know, renegade and they do whatever it is that they they, 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 they they're actually trained to do which is not to be responsive to community so um so that's my first point that that you know needs to happen um the other things that I want to hear about I know you've talked about it before but just to kind of like confirmation is when are the hours going to be increased um 
When are you all going to be handling noise complaints? Um, also, uh, you know, even if you guys do the noise complaints, because I know noise complaints can be a lot, but even if you guys do it in, in kind of like really thinking about what's priority in terms of noise complaints. So obviously priority would be any nonviolent, uh, you know, um, concerns that involve minors, <laughs> because obviously, um, you know, the police can't handle it. So, uh, so those are some of my questions, um, you know, any, any responses or so January 7th is our next, uh, kind of shift in hours. Um, we're really, uh, examining what the capacity of our folks is, what sort of supports they need to be effective. Um, we'll be getting, uh, some communication out to the wider community in the next week about what that'll look like. Um, I just want to be honest that we are probably operating and will be operating pretty close to the, the ends of our capacity. Um, everybody is doing a lot of extra hours and I don't know that I can ask any of my team to take on any more. And feasibly, I don't know that I can offer much more um, than kind of what we're doing right now. It's it's This was always gonna be true. We are a small department. Um, and so I just wanna, you know, when we talk about things like uh, policies and training for other departments, I, I don't know that reasonably there's anything on my tip on my plate that I could take off to take that on and my my plate is very full right now so I just I'm not, I'm not making excuses I just want to be honest about what my capacity looks like right now um we so, do uh, have a me, yeah I just interject. want to say one piece we do have a motivational interviewing training that we've offered to anybody um the survival center is is looking at it Craig's door has taken it the Amherst College Police Department is taking it it is widely available to anyone who would like to take it and it's the same trainer we had so I think one thing that I'd like to say about that and I mean again I'm not trying to put and I, I know you all are doing you know everything that you all can do and you all are doing a great job I want to put it out there you guys are doing excellent work I've, I've only heard positive things about the work that you all are doing and so that's why I'm saying we need more of it so this is why we're here, right? So what do you need, Earl? You know what I'm saying? Do you need an assistant director? Do you need blah, blah, blah? Do you need, you know, I think you need to go back and really kind of think about what you need and, you know, how many more staff or whatever, because you can't do it all. And yeah, if you all get sick, because remember when, when CSWG, when we were looking at this, we actually had recommended a lot more staff <laughs> and things like that. And we got chopped down. You, you know, so so I think the reality, right, because it, now we've had it, you guys are in place for like nine months or, or, te, or whatever many months is that's what they had said, right? Oh, well, we want to see if, if, if this works and we want to see if people are going to utilize it. Guess what? Yes, it works and people are utilizing it. And that means we need more and we need yeah. more to assist you and we need more to assist the staff and we need more in, in place. And we understand how the budget system is, you know, which really kind of crowds out, you know, programs like yours. And so that's why I'm saying, I mean, I, I don't want to add another thing to your plate, but I think this will be something actually good for you to do because if you say what it is you need, we can go to bat for you. Yeah, so <laughs> the only thing I do, I just don't want to get ahead of, we're in the midst of the kind of internal budget process and uh, me and my program assistant, Kat Newman, are, are taking part of the day tomorrow to, to get that in. And um, no, we, we believe that town is going to partner with us on, on those things. I just want to say, and I think, again, I think this is kudos to the CSWG, um, and everybody who worked on this, that we are the fastest department to, uh, to deployment in the country by, by at least a year, it looks like. Um, so, you know, some of this is a conversation about not just kind of growing capacity, but not wanting to grow faster than what we can kind of take on. So, um, one of the things we're looking at is having another public forum. I know there was one last January um, and having a space. Um, there's a process of community conversation that the Obama administration did uh, that I really like as far as getting kind of group um, feedback. Um, so I'm, I'm working with the town right now to, to get that scheduled and worked out with everyone. I'll make sure you all get invited and, and good notice before it goes up. Thank you. Appreciate it. And great work you. again. Appreciate you. Sorry, Pat. Uh, That's sorry, okay. Pat, for interrupting you. No, you didn't. I was the one waiting for the chair. <laughs> it was great to finally meet you in person. Uh, I know finally, the other day. Yes, it was really nice. Yes. Yes, Pat. <laughs> oh, so I can go. Okay, okay, okay. So actually, um, that touch on you know some issues I wanted to raise. Let me just limit limit. It's equity issue. Okay, so. The police department never shut down because of training, 
the fire department doesn't. And why should CREST program not be available on any, any given day? Is it resource allocation? Do we need more staffing? Training, scheduling, you know, when that is, you know, training with the police department, they don't shut down for all the police officers to attend. Maybe, you know, figuring out town, uh, staff, press staff, some go, half go another time, something to think about. Um, I also is wondering about the mental health services that in Springfield, I, I'm curious to get an update. I know that our town is working with a white-led mental health organization, which I continue to remain concerned. And CSWG did recommend a BIPOC-led organization, mental health. And it seems like it, it went out, you know, out of the air thin, like I'm yes, just I curious to see the update. Are we still? Might Do be we easier still for have me to work. a professional relationship with the mental health organization in Springfield is my question. The ADMA, the African Diaspora Mental Health Association. Yep. Yep. Uh, we put out an RFP for mental health services. Um, the reality is that I wanted to make sure that this was done ethically, that it wasn't that everybody who wanted to had an opportunity to bid. Um, so we selected from the bidders we have. I, I'm not going to get back into that. I think we've, we've had that conversation. Um, there were challenges where we're over it. I think we've resolved the issues that we had. Um, and we can really, the people we're working with, I believe in now, we'll have another opportunity next fiscal year, hopefully assuming that the DPH grant continues to, to look to loop more folks in. Um, but I don't want to spend too much time looking back because uh, I think that second, that first question is, is one that I can uh, sink my teeth into a little bit more. Um, so the, the fire department and police department are, are much larger than us. They also have a longer history. So they're able to send folks away to get trained. Um, these are not, um, these are not what I would call modality trainings. These are trainings on using our equipment. Um, and without everybody able to use them at the same time, we're not able to leverage that technology for anybody. So it isn't, if, if I had 10 more people, I would still shut that down the department to train the folks on this thing. It, it is, a uh, kind of uh, a weight thing. Um, the expense to get another set of this training would be uh, burdensome for us, given where we are right now. Um, we're using a, a large national uh, CAD system. So getting uh, a training together is pretty tricky. They work with uh, hundreds of municipalities. So um, I, I we have been able to operate with training by having folks go out. So a good example is Chalo, uh, who's one of our responders. Uh, he's currently doing some shadowing with a motivational interview trainer um, so that in the future, he'll be able to offer that training internally to us during people's shifts. Um, but I think I just would remind folks, we, we don't have any institutional history. Um, so the big part is we don't have anybody who comes to the table with skill sets that they can offer. So if we train half of our team, then it'll be an equity issue um, because it'll take us a long time to get any training back. And it'll mean that half of our team has a skill and the other half doesn't. Um, and it'll just create mm -hmm. some teams being able to, you can disagree. It, mm -hmm. it is kind of where we are with it. And we've, we've examined doing half of the team and half of the other, but um, right now, everybody is still in need of supervision. Um, they're three months into deployments. They've worked for the town for five months. Um, that is very early. Uh, if you look at Cambridge Heart, uh, they hired their staff a year ago. They have not deployed yet. They're still training. Um, so I'm I'm proud of where we are with it. I don't mean to be disagreeable. No, it's not disagreeable. I'm an employer and I don't shut down my company because you know my all my staff have to go to training. I we will, you know, we are we arrange for groups to have the training done. Sure. So I, I'm you know, I'm really concerned if Crest will be shutting down. Because you know the department is young, it's new, you know, um, and then there's no coverage, there's no backup. I'm just concerned in general. I appreciate that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you, uh, Earl. And um, it sounds like you know you're you're doing your best to to run at capacity and serving a broad sector of our community. Um, I have a question 
about now that you bring up, you know, not using ADMA, okay. Um, can you clarify what uh, group of social services you're using for mental health? And is it contracted uh, individual therapists or is it as a, a, a business or, or group in terms of social services for mental health? Um, so I can speak to the folks we have signed contracts with. We're still negotiating some with some groups. Um, so what I would say is we're using the Wildflower Alliance, which is a recommendation of the LEAP report. Um, they have a whole um, Wild Ivy uh, social justice movement, which is led by folks of color. Um, they're going to start providing some mental health groups in town. Um, we did not end up with a case management provider. Nobody bid to do that. So it wasn't a service that we're able to offer. Um, and we have our MI trainer on that that um, that training milieu too. Um, we were only able to work with the folks who filled out the RFP, and so we were limited by that. I see. So um, there's a possibility that people were not interested in uh, filling out the RFP, or or it wasn't uh, they didn't see it as competitive enough, or the, or the you don't feedback know. we got from folks was that there were contracts that came out from the state that were larger fiscally, um, and that our contract for the work required to bring services across counties to Amherst, um, the the amount of money just wasn't frankly gonna they weren't gonna be able to get clinicians to work. Um, and that's a very real concern with the kind of uh, work shortages. Um, we worked really hard to recruit folks. Um, I would say we we had eight or nine agencies reach out, um, and ultimately, the vast majority of them decided not to move forward with us. And and I respected them making that decision as an agency. Um, for a big agency, you know, what we heard was you would need, you know, at least a quarter million dollars to do anything. And that was the full thrust of the, the funding that we were um, really looking at. So it became challenging. Okay, that I understand. Thank you for clarifying that. So um, obtaining individuals who would be willing to provide these services instead of, I guess, the RFP system, um, that's not something that you all are entertaining to have like individual contracts? I, I think it opens the door to substantial conflict of interest potential. Um, and, and I don't mean for anybody but me, um, the impression that maybe I would be hand selecting folks that I knew as opposed to making it a, an equitable process. Um, that's what the RFP process is intended for, um, to make sure that everybody is measured against the same um, standards. Um, and it provides uh, some oversight. And I really want to make sure that particularly in matters of, of fiscal things, that there isn't even the impression of, of any ethics violation. So that's why we chose to go the RFP route out. Um, and I think what we're likely to do is do it again next year. Um, now that we'll have a year under us, um, and, and we may recalibrate pieces of it to make it more attractive for folks. Okay. And maybe the, the it more competitive financially. Uh, well, uh, that would really be a matter of the state. So the grant we have uh, only allow 250,000 is what we have for community providers. Right. Yeah. So, okay. That, we're pursuing grants where we have a yeah. grant we're waiting on right now that I, I don't know how great the chance is. We're um, actively pursuing grants. And so that's one of the hard parts about this. If mm -hmm. we can find a grant that could expand that, absolutely. We absolutely considered individual therapists and um, even separate from this, we're looking at, uh, we have a social service meeting um, that we started, but doing a version of that for individual therapists who are interested. Right, um, right. And and really wanting to create that um, that sort of equity piece. I'll, I'll tell you the hard part has been that particularly for therapists of color, um, they're in high demand right now. Yes. Um, so we want to make sure that we do this in a way where we are actually able to get some of that diversity into it. If I started it today, it wouldn't look any different from what folks would be able to get just through their insurance. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Phil. Yeah, on the um, discussion of clinicians and all that, um, I don't know if you looked into UMass Clinical Psych Program. They also have um, clinicians there. Also a low um, income barrier that if you have not insurance that will cover, you can pay out that income. I do know that there's a high wait list on it. So 
Just wanted yeah. to offer that. We're we're talking uh, uh, all the clinical groups. We've had some discussions with most of them in town, um, and we are you know one of the places we're hoping to grow is to build out a clinical component. Um, you know, I think ideally we would have clinicians on the team, but uh, we couldn't afford them right now based on what the market rate is, and that's the market rate for working remote or working in an office, not necessarily like. Uh, being on the street with folks. So um, it's a it's a really hard market. And, and there's some big uh, mental health products coming on the market uh, in January that are going to make it even more challenging. We're seeing people, Allegra knows this, we're seeing people come out of college into like pretty intensive roles that historically you wouldn't see someone go into for maybe a decade. Um, and it's so that that job market for those folks in particular is just continues to be really, really challenging. And um, one of the feedback we have gotten from every mental health provider we've talked to is that they would appreciate us staying out of that market for right now, not being competitors. Got it. And then um, I just had a clarifying question, if you could. Uh, do you know the dates that Crest will not be responding just for community members or? No, for no. And, you know, obviously, if there's a way around it, we'll we'll do that. Um, but the the challenge is just, there isn't, our, our schedule is pretty tough right now. Um, kind of folks are coming in uh, outside of our briefing at the beginning and middle of the day. Everybody is kind of doing stuff all throughout the day. So I think it. We're, if, if it's up to me, it would, we're going to try to do it in that, um, that week between Christmas and New Year's where things are generally quieter anyway. Um, so hopefully that effect won't be too profound. Um, we'll still have someone answering the phones. Um, so this won't be a no response for those folks. It, it just may be a slightly delayed one. And um, and sorry, uh, Deborah, you asked a question earlier that I should have answered, which is we have already gone on some calls that would be considered noise complaints. We've been dispatched to those, um, uh, including some downtown, and we've been successful at those. Um, you know, folks who are making a lot of noise downtown, uh, we have found that you know, folks are pretty receptive to us. And and that's a huge testament to uh, folks like Kevon Lord, um, and, and Kenneth Michael, Q, uh, Vanessa Phillips, folks who grew up in town and really understand where folks are coming from. We have found really great success in that kind of familiarity with, with uh, some of the more challenged communities in our, in our town. Yeah, and I, and I thought you all, would be, yeah, you all would be successful. It's just about, again, it just um, having the capacity to do it, you know? Yeah, so I, I think wh where we are now is, I, I think it was a misstatement for us to say that we wouldn't do noise complaints. I think what you what, what the actual thing is, is for large noise complaints on the college campuses or noise complaints with people where there's a history of violence or a reason for folks to be concerned, we aren't gonna go. Um, but, you know, recognizing that gamut of noise complaints, uh, particularly for some of the downtown folks who are experiencing substantial emotional distress, um, we're seeing those folks all the time now. And uh, one of the things we'll start in January is um, we may start a team early um, and do some of the, you know, some of the folks who sleep rough outside, um, you know, sleep in like ATM places, getting some responders out to do that work as opposed to currently the setup. And if folks voted on uh, election day, you almost certainly saw a crest responder at your polling place, um, which was another piece of, of things that we're able to do, which we didn't think we would be able to do, but made sense the day of. Appreciate that. Um, is there a way to put that on the town website or to inform people that that week Crest responders uh, will be taking a hiatus due to, you know, what whatever, just to let people know uh, to not expect a Crest responder during that time? Yeah, and we've actually been doing that all along with the holidays. Okay. Um, because because we haven't expanded to those other shifts, we're still really needing to give folks the holidays. Yeah. Um, so when the Thanksgiving holiday came up, we posted something up saying, hey, Chris won't be here the Thursday okay. or the Friday. Um, and what we found actually is it was helpful. The people who we have, we're starting to get the regular flow of people. Uh, we have a woman at Clark. We walk home and uh, back and forth from the senior center every day. Uh, those folks, we were able to get other folks in town to support. Um, we Amherst Neighbors has been great. The Survival Center right. have been great partners. So um, in those spaces where we're not there, we're really working to proactively get resources for the people who we know would be looking for us on those days. That's that's really awesome because it it gives a picture of a community that cares. 
So um, appreciate thinking through that. Okay, any other questions for Earl or about Cress? I, I just wanna, before I go, um, over the last week, I've gotten some really great feedback from folks like Leap um, that Amherst is starting to come up in national conversations around this. And, and that's something I'm really proud of and that we're able to be so forward thinking. I know that's because of uh, the time and commitment folks have put in. Um, I just shared the Leap report with folks in Canada and Florida. I spoke at a church in Florida who's looking at changing their security apparatus. So I know for a long time, we've talked about how the larger communities have helped us. Um, but right now we're supporting about five or six communities that are are looking to do this sort of initiative. And I'm I'm really proud of that. I think that was a big hinge point for us when we were able to start offering support to other communities. Um, and that's happened and we're really excited to be doing that. And uh, we're looking forward to bringing some of those folks into town soon. Um, and we'll work with all of you. If, if folks are available, we'd love for them to meet as much of as much of the town as they can. That's really great to know. So you're saying, if I heard you correctly, that you were using the CSWG LEAP report. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, that, that research to, yeah, and we, sharing. We, yeah, I was I I spoke on a panel at a, a national convention on Sunday on Saturday uh, and shared the leap report. Lots of people had read it before they showed up. We are getting calls from Oakland. Folks are looking at this and and setting up. And uh, it's it's really interesting because now lots of folks are looking at the process we had and looking to replicate it, which is is you know I think I hope for everybody feels a little bit like justification. Well, that's awesome, Merle, because, you know, uh, for a while that uh, report and that uh, information was not validated. So um, thank you for, for stating it publicly that it's being used now nationally, even internationally in Canada. So anyway, I really appreciate what you're doing. I know it's uh, a hard task. You've been on the job nine months. Uh, you and Pam have put in a lot of effort uh, to, to ramp up very quickly um and we're we're just here to really support that help you think through it and, and make I, sure I hope you guys know I always appreciate the, the tough questions I appreciate <laughs> that you all are so thoughtful and searching in these things um I won't ever get better if people don't ask those sorts of questions great thank you I just want to mention I'm very impressed with your leadership I like the energy you brought to your job and when we recommended Cress, I never envisioned the approach that you took you know, that I really, really like, like you were out there in the community, people know, you know, what Crest is, because I've asked people randomly, you know, have you heard about Crest Responder or something? And then I'll mention one or two members, because I know one of them worked for me, and they said, oh, that program, yeah, okay, yeah, I've, I've, I've seen them around. So I think you've done excellent job, you know, um, in terms of visibility about Crest program. Thank you. And and we'll have we'll have flyers and pamphlets for you all in January. Uh we're handing out about 500 to 1000 business cards a week. We are we are doing our best to get the word out and and we appreciate the work you all do um in, in spreading that and I know you all are doing that in your network. So thank you very much. Yeah, and I think the other thing too and I think it was mentioned by by Mindy and at at the award but obviously you know, it, it's really great, and, and and some of us already said it about the fact that others are trying to look at what we we did, right, and trying to replicate it. Um, because I think a lot of times here in, in our own town, you know, we're not given <laughs> as much credit for anything, but at least others outside of the of the town are appreciating it. So yeah, you know, I've said it other places. I'll say it that. here for the record. Mm -hmm. uh, if it wasn't for those conversations that you all are a part of, I I would not have even considered taking this job. Uh, if it wasn't for the work that had already happened, uh, I I don't think I don't think if I had to do those conversations and then figure out how to do what I'm doing, I, I would have had any ability to be effective. So the fact that that work was done when I got here, um, I think if you look at other communities where their director is having to start that process themselves, um, you can see why we were able to move with the speed we did. And it's a testament to the conversations and the work this community did. Hey, little man. All right, I'm going to get out of here now. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Thank all you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah. All right. Okay, let's move on. I, just, I muted myself. Hello, Pam. <laughs> um, can you give us an update on DEI? Sure. There's not going to be a lot to communicate because, as I've said, I was out for the last three weeks. Um, um, but 
the things that you should be aware of is that I think at the last meeting, I said that Jen and I had completed a self assessment tool with plans to roll that out to the departments that it, we were awaiting approval from the town manager. And so we have um, had that process reviewed by the tan, town manager and approved. So that um, is ready to really roll out. Um, she uh, and I completed uh, uh, basically a, a calendar of events that would coincide, or I guess um, coincide's not the right word, that would um, list the planned activities for the DEI department and the Human Rights Commission. So like an annual calendar events um, that would be both cultural and informative in nature. So included in the cultural um, events, so the Lunar New Year, Martin Luther King, Kwanzaa, and then uh, a plan for the uh, informative events around uh, the racial healing work. So that calendar has been completed and um, we have gone through the list and sort of decided who's gonna take the lead in planning uh, events. Although, you know, the plan is obviously for us to work on all events together, but someone needs to be sort of take the lead in, in the planning for those things. Um, Philip already mentioned uh, one of the upcoming events, um, which is the Human Rights Day. In addition to that, um, plans are underway. But, and I think Jen has been planning this primarily with Liz Haygood um, for Kwanzaa on uh, December 26, which will be from 11 to three at the Bangs Community Center. And then um, the Martin Luther King Day celebration that the town will do will be on January 15th. And then on January 17th, the uh, town will be participating in uh, the National Day of Racial Healing that is sponsored by the Kellogg Foundation. So I'm taking the lead on putting that program together. Um, uh, in addition to that, uh, I have um, followed up with um, sort of informal contact with two different groups of consultants. So uh, I've contacted uh, three individuals that might be um, possible consultants for the Resident Oversight Board. I've heard back from two of the three with plans to have just preliminary conversations with them about the scope of their services and their fees. Um, and that well, those conversations will take place um, in advance of the due date for the budget, our budget proposal. So they'll have an opportunity to put that information into a proposed budget for next year. Um, and I have been assured that um, we won't be waiting until next year to hire, that there would probably be an opportunity for a mid-year appropriation to get the work started during this fiscal year. And then the second group um, are um, individuals who I, I've identified to have conversations with around the work around the racial reconciliation or racial healing. Um, and I think that's pretty much all that I have to report on at this point. So uh, thank you, Pam. Um, I have a question about the, you, you mentioned three consultants, are they national, regional, local? So all of the uh, individuals that I have reached out um, to um, and concern um, regarding the resident oversight board are past presidents of the uh, NACALI organization. Okay. Okay. So, so, and one of them is regional. So, but they're all past presidents who um, have worked with the organization and who now do consulting work. Okay. Um, the other uh, consultants around racial healing, as you know, I had reached out uh, to Dr. Love. I uh, uh, prior reached out to her a second time, and then um, the other uh, individuals are all within the Commonwealth. So. Okay. Um, yes. So, yeah, it'd be interesting uh, to know 
you know, are they regional, uh, Western Mass, Boston? Um, because when you're talking about doing that type of work, it's good to have a sense of the community, of course, that you're working with. Right. So um, with both of the, the potential consultants, there will be an RFP process, so it will be public. But these are individuals that, I, um, that I've just reached out to have some preliminary conversations with so that I can have an understanding of the scope of services and what the range of fees might be so that I can craft the RFP in a way that will likely receive um, you know, interest. Yeah, so there's there's no formal um, commitment to hire anyone. There'll be an RFP process. Yeah. Thank you. Ms. Pat? So um, you already, thank you for your report. And I'm glad that you reached out to uh, Dr. Barbara Love. As you know, CSWG really strongly recommended her in our report. I have question around the Rob, the resident oversight board consultant. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I'm having anxiety um, of who the town, you know, ends up hiring. I will hope that that person or group will go with what CSWG recommended because it will be really a slap in the face if what we researched with the input from LEAP and seven gen consultants. And if that is thrown out of the window, um, I think um, that would not be good. So mm -hmm. I am really having lots of anxiety um, because I think CSWG really, really worked hard to make sure that we got, we got it. And I understand that as variations of Resident over, uh, over, uh, Oversight Board. And um, I don't want to repeat myself, but we'll so, see how it plays so, out. So all of those reports um, mention the national organization, uh, which since to, I think I haven't found another uh, premier organization that's the, I'm, I'm going to get the acronym incorrect, but I think it's the National Organization. Um, I can't remember what the C is uh, um, uh, for law enforcement. So there's one national, it's NACALI is the abbreviation. So, and um, all of the consultants that we reached out to for this initial conversation, there will be an RFP process for this, are all past presidents. The, um, the prior sort of timeline that I had drafted uh, relied heavily on uh, both the prior reports that have been done and the advice of that organization. So I don't, um, oh, it's the N is for civilians. So National Association of Civilian Legal um, Law Enforcement Oversight. Um, I don't think that there would be misalignment between the work that had been previously done and the uh, individuals who um, might, you know, respond to an RFP. There, there, there. I, I don't know if there would be um, another class of individuals that would be better prepared to do the type of work that, you know, it's very specialized. Um, if I may, and I will shut up after this, and I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, will it be possible to have at least two former CSWG members, and I'm thinking about Mr. Ross Vernon Jones and Brianna Owen, to you know, be part of this process? Um, so it, it is their baby, literally. Mm -hmm. I know we all, you know, CSWG with, but. This is, you know, their baby. So it's just something I, I want to throw out there. Yeah. So I don't know whether they, I guess I don't really know the answer to that uh, question because I don't know what the parameters are for the RFP process. I have another meeting scheduled to, uh, to speak with Sean early next week. And I know that he'll be working uh, closely with me and um, 
and helping me to put that process together. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't know. I have to understand what the parameters are for the RFP process I, um, before I could respond to that. Because CSWG, we actually was involved in uh, RFP mm -hmm. in the past, and that's how we were able to hire Seven Gen to, you know, to consult with. I will shut up. So, Deborah, or yeah. yeah. Yeah, so um, thank you, Pamela, for the um, update. I think, you know, going along with what Ms. Pat is saying, um, you know, we just want to like, when you're getting ready to do the RFP, I guess it would be good to kind of come back to us to kind of, so we can really see what the parameters are for these consultants, because yeah, we don't need to kind of, um, you know, recreate the wheel here um, since a lot of the work has already been done. Um, and we want to make sure, right, you know, you're going to be putting, I'm very happy that you're putting out as an RFP so that also we can make sure to kind of get in touch with anyone, things like that, right, and put it out in the community and things like, you know, in, in regards to others um, applying for the RFP. So, so that's the thing. We do want to make sure that there is alignment. Um, between because what what you want to use the CSWG report that we did using you know seventh gen and and leap uh, as consultants is to really that be the guidepost and the consultants coming on which I'm in agreement with the consultants coming on but it's for them to come on to help do the work so that oversight work can be put in place as quickly as possible you know so you know would appreciate you um, once you have kind of the parameters for the RFP, if, if, if we could look at that, that would be one. And then two, um, in terms of the RFP for uh, the, the, the trainers for the racial healing, um, that's another one too, you know, just to kind of share that with us. I know, I know a lot of, a lot of consultants, so I want to make sure that I, I get it out to people because that's going to be key. We need to get the right folks for this racial healing um, because to do racial healing, you need to have someone that really, you know, the community, especially a uh, BIPOC community are going to trust. Um, it can't be same old, same old, can't be consultants, you know, holding up the status quo and things like that. It's going to be someone who truly knows how to create that, that um, atmosphere and environment of safety and trust to guide through and have a real plan, right? An intensive, intentional plan that's going to be over some time. It's not gonna happen overnight. And so, um, so yeah, so that's another one that I'll be interested in. One, seeing you know, that written up, a draft before it becomes final. And then um, when it does become final, letting us know so that we can get the word out. Okay, thank you. Allegra? Um, I think I wanted to echo what Ms. Patton and Deborah had already said. Um, and, you know, I, I was looking at mm, what Nicole, Nicole, however we say it. Um, I, was cool. at, yeah. cool. <laughs> I was looking at their website the other day um, because I know that a lot of some the research supporting um, the CSWG recommendations was was drawn from some of that material, and I did like that on their um, on their website they have a feature where you can search different things that have been put into place in different places, and you can um, you can actually you know filter it like a normal thing that you search on the internet these days. But there is a filter that you can put in for whether um, whether there's subpoena power for current officers and i guess you know my suggestion or my hope would be that we would be looking at those boards that met that filter um because i think you know there needs to be that power um for this board but i you know i guess my question was in terms of the consultant would they, you know, I'm hoping that they would receive all of the previous reports that have already been pulled together as a start, as a jumping off point, um, so that, you know, that alignment is laid out in the beginning or, or kind of like, this is where we're already coming from. 
the research that has already been done and how can you carry us forward? And I think, I think kind of what Deborah said, bringing the timeline that you had kind of showed us about the different things um, you hoped to have done before, I think hopefully the consultant could kind of take us through that timeline um, and not take us back to, to what had already been done by CSWG and 7Gen. I don't know, was there a question in there? I think there was a question somewhere in the middle. And then it I sounds <laughs> like concerns, <laughs> which are good concerns. So, yeah, so I, go ahead. No, so yeah, I, I don't know that there was necessarily a, uh, a question, but I think the, um, it, there's, it, any consultant who wouldn't review all of the prior work wouldn't be worth hiring. So that would be an expectation of the professionalism of the person that you would, no one who would seriously take on this job would not, um, would not want to review and have an under deep understanding. And I think by limiting um, to some extent, at least this initial inquiry, um, the conversations to past presidents, of, uh, Nicole, you get the level of expertise and depth of knowledge that's required. Um, uh, you know, so um, I have not had, uh, I mean, I just, as I said, I was out for three weeks. I just placed those inquiries this week. I have a conversation scheduled um, for this Friday and another conversation scheduled for the following Friday. And um, I have not heard from the third, uh, from the third um, possibility. If I don't hear from them by the end of the week, then I'll reach out to a fourth. The, the purpose of these preliminary conversations or um, are really more to assist me in the drafting of the RFP so I have a full understanding of what the scope of services are and what the fee schedule would be. Um, I did not want to attempt to draft an RFP without having some conversations with some experts because what I might assume to be uh, the scope of services might be far off from what is actually needed and um, I don't have um, an idea of what the fee schedule might be for this type of work. So in order to get that background, I scheduled, I tried to schedule these three preliminary conversations, which will help in drafting of the RFP. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Um, so kind of like Allegra, uh, one of the concerns, or, or I have two concerns and, and maybe um, suggestions since you're, this is preliminary right now. Um, and it's, it's great that you're sharing this with us uh, because this is what we, we ask for. We, we ask to be um, supportive and available to you to help shape you know, what's, what's the end result eventually of a resident oversight board. Uh, so two things, because uh, this was some of the stuff that I uh, consulted with CSWG about um, looking at NACOL. One part of NACOL uh, concerning resident uh, oversight is um, kind of a cautionary tale right, as uh, Allegra uh, offered, or I don't know, it was Deborah, whoever mentioned, you have to have some subpoena power. So these communities who have resident oversight boards in place and don't have subpoena power, it's, it's a, you know, kind of null and void in, in terms of bringing a complaint and having any uh, ability to act upon anything. So that's one. So if, if you could look at the, the communities, and they, they do have some listed within uh, NACOL's website, and if you, again, need help doing that, we're, we're here. It's also, I think, in, in the report. Um, so look at the ones that have subpoena power and that have been uh, somewhat successful, because there are some communities where it has been problematic where those residents have not been able to participate on any level. 
Um, so there are good models out there, in other words. Um, and then the other thing is that there is um, something beyond, I guess, a resident oversight. Other communities have created uh, something like a resident oversight board, not calling it that. One that I often bring up is in San Diego, and it's uh, it comes out of an organization like a CSWG, so to speak, uh, San Diegans for, uh, for Justice. And they created something like a resident oversight board, but it was actually um, something that they brought to a vote in their, in their community uh, to make sure that it was part of the overall structure within the town. Not necessarily that we need something like that, but again, it might be helpful to look at other models and how the residents are able to participate and have some level of um, authority. Uh, so those are those are basically the two things um, I have to add. Any other comments for for Pam? Okay, I guess it's also in our agenda. So thank you for providing some um, comments on it. Uh, before we get to it as a whole agenda item, but. Um. So I just want to mention that Councillor Dorothy Pam is with us. Oh, great. And um, I don't know if anybody reached out to Councillor uh, Pat D'Angelo. They're both our liaison. I feel so bad. <laughs> Well, no, I think, uh, you know, everybody's doing a lot and yeah. uh, it's on the it's on the agenda. And I'm sure, um, you know, uh, Jennifer Moyston, who sends out our uh, our invitations, hopefully is sending it to uh, the council members. If not, uh, we need to make that correction. Do you know, uh, Miss Young? I, I don't know if um, this um, was sent out, but I think in the past Jennifer has, but I'm I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm, you know, I as I said, I've been out for the last three weeks. Um, sure. Um, so I'm not sure what. Okay, so we just need to check on that. I don't think it should be our um, our job, uh, Miss Pat, to to send that out. Um, I see Dorothy Pam has her hand raised, and I believe as our liaison, she is allowed to answer a clarifying question. That would be great. Be. <laughs> <laughs> Can someone allow her to speak? You have it, Pam. Mm -hmm. So she's she's Dorothy. Here. Can you? Are you moving? Oh. Okay, here we go. Um, they, they, did, they did not send out a notice, um, mm -hmm. but I went to the website and uh, checked in that way. And I'm, I'm late checking in because I was on grandparent duty earlier today. Um, but yes. uh, it, it is easier when you do send one out. It does prompt the memory. So that would be nice if you did. I would appreciate that. Yeah. So well, sorry. <laughs> So if we could make a note of that, Pam, um, and have Jennifer in her multiple emails she sends out to also include Pat DeAngelis and Dorothy Pam, I'd appreciate it. Yep. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So where are we? We, If we have no more questions for Pam Young, we can move on to budget advocacy. I think those are things that have already come up within these conversations with Cress, and uh, it came up last meeting with DEI. We were asking um, Ms. Young how we could advocate for more staff uh, for the DEI office. We've heard from um, Earl, you know, that uh, things are already stressed. I mean. You know, I hear them about the holidays, but if we look at the research and statistics, it's do it's during the holidays. I mean, it's all the time, but during the holidays in which people who are challenged with um, 
addiction, mental illness, um, often fall into crises. And so that concerns me um, personally and um, as, as a resident that this great organization is doing a great job is not gonna be available. And so maybe we can't correct it this year, but um, it's definitely something we need to advocate for in terms of funding. I mean, yes, they deserve time off, but they're like you say, Miss Pat, as um, you know, a business owner, you account for coverage mm -hmm. when your you know regular folk uh, mm -hmm. have time off. Yep. So I don't know if we want to put together. I mean, I think we need to at this point because this is this is this moment um, a list of what we see as the CSSJC um, areas of funding that pertain to the continuation of uh, the CSWG um, uh, suggestions and, and that was approved by town council that these are areas that need to be funded. You know, Crest was never fully funded. This marks a hole in that fund in that funding and their capacity to fulfill their role. Same thing with DEI. So um, I think you know if Allegra, <laughs> if can you uh, maybe as as we talk about this, if we could have a quick discussion on. Um, the different items that we need to maybe send forth as an organization, as the CSSJC, as a group to the town council and to the town manager. Are you asking me to write something down? Yes. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, or no, whoever. No, 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 don't, not no, now. Don't it's being no, recorded. So it's being recorded. <laughs> I know, but I, oh my gosh, Daniel Tiger. Okay, it's very, it's okay. But if we could maybe just kind of go over some of these other suggestions that we have mentioned throughout these meetings. So Cress, you know, it sounds like they're getting two vehicles. That's exciting, but you know, they still don't, they're not fully funded so they don't have coverage. DEI, we already see that, um, you know, uh, that they need more staff, right? Uh, what else? So my suggestion would be, I know everybody's so busy and we tend to put everything on the coaches. CSWG already made recommendation. My understanding is that during budget season, each departmental head, you know, they come up with their proposal that they submit to the town manager, I'm assuming. So I think our role is just to the same exact uh, recommendation that CSWG did um, in support of the two departments. I see okay. DEI department, for example, we need multicultural um, BIPOC cultural center. We need the youth center. Right. And um, it's still, uh, uh, DEI is still underfunded. Um, we, you know, we need uh, office assistant, you know, to support the DEI director and the DEI assistant director. And I can go on and on. The, the Rob um, stipend that, you know, um, that CSWG recommended, all those stuff is already in place. We just need the coaches to, if we trust the coaches, instead of them bringing it for review or something, the document is already there. They can just <laughs> then state that they, you know, they want to support the two departments and send to town manager and then to the uh, town council. One thing I do want, want to mention is that I do not buy the fact that the finance committee keeps saying we have to make tough you know, decisions, tough choices, and this and that, only when it comes to um, project that impacts marginalized community. We don't have any problem like advocating and pushing for Jones Library. It doesn't matter how much it costs. 
But when it comes to youth center and bicultural center, that's when we start making tough decisions. We cannot accept no for answer. We need to show up at those hearings and, and speak up. That's what I want to say. Thank you, Ms. Pat. And just so to clarify, you think if we write like a brief memo and attach the original budgets as outlined yeah. from CSWG, that would be sufficient? Except that the, the budget that we propose at a time does not include, for example, stipend for the Re resident oversight board. Okay. We didn't include that. And um, I'm sure there are other expenses that we didn't include. Is everyone we'll agreed do. for that? Because that would save a lot of time. Fine. Yeah. We need to take a vote. For the new members, I would like to hear from them. Freke? Bill? Could I have a uh, second round of what's um, what this process is? So again? Could I have a second round of what this process is? Um, someone is going to um, draft some documents. Um, could you explain what's going on? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. sure. I picked up. Yeah. Okay. So CSWG, CSLJC, it's our, this committee is something that CSWG recommended to ensure that the recommendation made, made by CSWG is actually implemented. So part of our role as CSWG is to really monitor and make sure that we continue to advocate for those projects. So I think one of the things that could happen is, you know, um, either the co-chairs or Jen can send you and Philip the recommendation for, from CSWG that is still not funded. Like the CREST program, they didn't, you know, fully fund it. And that's why that department is struggling, you know, with coverage. Like they're not doing 24 seven that we recommended. That's like an example. And then the DEI department, for example, we only have two people doing so much work. They need like office assistant. And DEI department is not just, you know, um, doc, um, Ms. Uh, Ms. Uh, Pamela and Ms. Jennifer. It also includes youth, youth, pro, uh, youth center, BIPOC, um, cultural center and other services, transportation. The, the town council did not, you know, they're not even discussing it, the, the um, finance committee either. But there is other uh, projects and services that we recommended that it, you know, it's not being talked about. And the, so the it's mostly on Jones Library. Right. It's in, it's in their report. Dollars. It's in their, their report. So if you go to the CSWG report so, and and um, it's on the town website, you'll see the recommendations. OK, so all we're asking is if it's OK with this committee to resend that list basically emphasizing that the CSSJC wants to see these items funded, fully funded. So it's already been asked for, voted on, all of that, but it hasn't been funded. So when we talk about budget advocacy, all we're asking is that, uh, do we agree to send some type of email, memo, what have you, to the town council to emphasize these things need to be funded this round. And not the dollar, not the dollar amount is the is a project, the items, because things have changed since last year that we recommended. So like the cost of buying like vehicle might be might be different for DEI department because we think that the department also need a vehicle and they don't have it right now. If we have, you know, with the bicultural bi center. So the, the email that will be sent to the town manager and the town council will just list our, you know, CSWG demands, what we recommended, not necessarily the, the money associated yeah. with it. They have to figure that out. Deborah? Exactly, exactly, yeah. Deborah. 
I mean, yeah, I mean, I get that, but I guess um, what would make what would make this a difference for them to 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 you know to to move the needle? I guess to make them say, okay, yeah, we're gonna do this. You know what I'm saying? I I guess for me, it would it would need to be like if it was in conjunction with Earl saying, yes, I need X Y Z P D Q. Pamela saying, I need X Y Z P D Q. You know what I'm saying? I mean, obviously the youth empowerment and all those other ones, those yeah, we, we need to include it because they haven't even funded any of those. But but with Crest and and DI, they're already in existence. So if we're just gonna say, yeah, we want it fully funded, it, it okay, yeah, all right. You did you said that last year. <laughs> you well, know, we I have examples it. from the report. We have examples, just what Earl offered, you know, so they're gonna have to take off a week during yeah, so that's what I'm saying. I think that's yeah. where we need to include some of those examples. Mm -hmm. You see what so, I'm saying? Absolutely. So Add with Paul's permission, with you all's yeah. permission, that's what Allegra and I could do. I could do. Um, but I, I agree, it has to be substantiated uh, and, and rooted in, uh, you know, these- What's are happening now. Exactly. Yeah. So- Okay, and then tacking on the other recommendations. Yep, I'm agree I'm in agreement. And we should not also forget because of the role that we play is to recommend issues of equity. So only very few committees are getting stipend. So I would like us to include in our advocacy for, for budget to include other committees like Human Rights Commission, I'm going to forget some other, you know, housing, whatever, right. for them to also get stipend. The town is where resource, we have the money. It's like, where are we putting, where are we putting our values and priorities? So you, you budget saying that we values. don't have it, it's, I, don't, I don't listen like, I don't yes. listen to, we have to make tough choices. I don't care. I don't I care. Got you. Yep. Okay, so if we're in agreement, um, because, you know, I don't even want to go through the whole history of three, well, two and a half years ago, where this whole conversation began about the town uh, budgeting their values. So this is a, this is just something we, we stay on them about, you know, you, you budget other people's values. <laughs> These are the values that uh, we see as important as uh, BIPOC and allied uh, BIPOC folks. So um, if that's okay, it's basically reemphasizing the CSWG uh, mandate. If I may, you don't, you don't know this is coming, but you can blush, Dr. D, if you're waiting for her, her and some other people two and a half years ago who pushed that if a committee is going to be appointed, you have to have stipend. And what happened? What happened? A lot of majority of BIPOC folks signed up and see what we produced. Absolutely. So we, when we, we will raise hell, it's not always easy that we get everything that we, we ask for, but we'll keep pushing is the point. And thanks because we have short memory in our town. But for me, it's good to keep reminding us people who have done something that we tend to forget. If you're waiting for Dr. D and some handful of residents who are bold enough, that's why, you it, know, it benefits everyone of CSWG. So Thank we you. need to keep pushing that Human Rights yeah. Commission, other committees. The town needs to pay up. We have we have the resources, we have the money. And also the town council, if we want diverse candidates to run, we need to raise what we're paying them right now. With the long hours and everything, it's almost insulting, you know, for what they're getting right now. And I don't even know what the process is. I would like to see the town councillors, you know, well compensated because they do hard work. I don't always agree with them, but, but you know, they put in a significant amount of time. So to noted. Do what they're doing. So noted. So I, I want to make sure we are paying attention to time. It is 7.53 uh, and we have not gone to the resident oversight board. Is there 
other items? Is there something else to discuss regarding the resident oversight board or did we cover well, it? And also yes. remember we, uh, you know, that my alarm went off a long time ago in regards yes. to the whole thing about the, uh, the motion and the July 5th incident. Absolutely. So, so put it can we, there. can we review what we have under four? So resident oversight board, I know that there's more to discuss within that. Um, listening session. What do we want to table that or do we want to, oh, we have to, okay, so we want to discuss that. List of consultants and, and contracts. Five ARPA, minutes, five minutes. ARPA distribution, town manager goals, report from you. All right, so what I would like to see, because I, I don't want us to um, forget what happened during the town council meeting. I, I think we do need to unpack it. Let's do the resident oversight board. And then what would come after that in terms of priorities, not the five minute pieces, the longer pieces, what would come after that? I think probably unpacking, unpacking town council slash um, other things that have come okay. forward related so, to that. Um, so like after, so. after the Rob, that's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's do that. All right. Resident oversight board. Um, Allegra. So this isn't so much about like the actual, once it is implemented, but I kind of had a suggestion for kind of a stopgap until it's up and running. And my suggestion would be that um, if there is a, another incident um, and this committee becomes aware of it, um, we could make a formal complaint with the post commission our, ourselves or as a committee. Um, and that would be a way where the complaint is not just lodged at the Amherst police, but is lodged at this other entity. Um, so that would be, that's, I guess, where my thinking was today. I, I agree. Now that we know kind of, you know, a bit of about more about post, uh, it's within two days, right, that we would be able to um, or, or it should have been, let's say the police as well within two days are supposed to uh, report these yes. things. So, and even HRC can uh, make a formal complaint to the state, but you're saying as a CSSJC, now that we know, mm -hmm. that, would, that would be, that was within our purview to also as a group make a formal complaint that is my understanding yeah and would be i suppose my intention <laughs> yeah so how how do we feel about that that's a useful i think it's a useful um uh way in which we should you know spend our time uh those are things that we're concerned about and um as the kind of official group within the town in that capacity, as well as the HRC to, um, to file that with the state. I think that would be uh, something useful to do. Yes, Ms. Pat. So Allegra, thank you for bringing that up. I'm totally in support of that. I'm wondering if people feel that we need to make a motion around this and take a vote or just by just regular agreement, you know, either way is fine with me. Um, uh, I also want to mention very quickly that a resident has sent me uh, a document which I forwarded to you all, to the town manager, to the town councillors, and to the police chief. Um, I was very concerned and disturbed because we've been told that the town has been in compliant with post. Well, a resident tried to get that information and indeed our town didn't do anything. How can we even start healing in our town when simple tra transparency is not happening? I don't know where we go from here. It's very frustrating. 
If indeed the town have filed complaint with post, it should be publicly available. But obviously it did not happen and we've been lied to, and I don't like using that word at all. I'm very frustrated. Thank you. So Pam, and I know you're not part of the police, um, but it was reported it, as we looked at our notes um, from September that they were in compliance of post. So can you explain the discrepancy or? So I um, cannot explain the discrepancy. I can only um, reiterate what was said to me, which was that um, the town is in compliance with uh, post. I think that um, it might be appropriate to ask for more clarification. I, I think I have an understanding about what why there might be a discrepancy, but I don't fully have the facts and so I wouldn't want to speak to that. Um, but all of the communication from the police department has been that they have fully complied with their requirements for a post. So it is confusing because on one hand, uh, compliance with posts might mean, and obviously I cannot get into the psychology, so we need uh, clarification, that they have sent in, I think it's one third of the police department, all of uh, the documents pertaining to one third of the police department mm -hmm. um, uh, and their officers, right? All the identifying information, complaints, all of that. So maybe that's what they think, you know, being a compliance. However, reporting this particular incident two days later would, or not reporting it would make them out of compliance because they are obligated to report it. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, yeah, I, I think that that is the, the question around um, that needs clarification. Mm -hmm. the, the requirements, the way in which the post is, commission is working is that um, each municipality is having one third of their police officers reviewed for um, credentialing and, um, and then that credentialing is good for a three year period. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I do believe that the police department in Amherst has completed that. Um, there is less clarity around the um, complaint reporting process and actually Jen and I attended a, a, a webinar training today um, that was done by the Mass Municipal, um, I guess Massachusetts Municipal Association on post um, where they reviewed both some of the statutory um, requirements and some of the issues that they are, that they are still addressing um, that they have not completed their processes for. Um, and the webinar was given by um, uh, the current chief of police in Pittsville who sits on the commission and um, um, another post commissioner, Enrique Zuinga. I don't know um, his um, like background, um, but they went through um, the requirements um, and made very clear that while their role in the commission is to implement the statute, they were not involved in the writing of the statute. And so there are lots of points uh, uh, around that they're seeking clarification on. There's no agreement um, around um, what certification means, for example, like for, for different agencies, because POST is not only reviewing every uh, you know, city and town police department, also doing reviewing police departments at um, uh, several other agencies, uh, the state troopers. So there's they they're they are still working through some of their alignment of what their requirements are. So um, I you know I am uncertain. I I know that the communication from the police department was that. They have met with all of their requirements. I think uh, it would be fair to ask them about the complaint, um, the complaint 
um, process. I don't, I don't have specific information about that, so I don't want to attempt to you know, have a response to it because I just don't know. So I, I appreciate that. And it, it sounds like, um, you know, on this particular issue, it has not been addressed in terms of, you know, uh, their compliance. That's that's unclear. Um, mm -hmm. Allegra. Um, I was just going to say that I, um, I think that there were a number of points at which it seems to me from reading the post stuff that things perhaps should have been reported. Um, if the police themselves did not file their own complaint against themselves related to the incident, um, it seems like at the very least when HRC filed a formal complaint, that would have triggered a reporting of a complaint to post. And then I know in Mr. Stewart's letter, he referenced um, a phone call to the police with a complaint about how the youth's name in one of the um, Freedom of Information Acts had not been redacted properly. Um, and, and nothing came of that. So I, you know, I don't know, again, if there are then three points at which it could have been a complaint that should have mm -hmm. been filed or, um, and, and that's, I guess, how I'm interpreting it, but. Yeah. I, I, I think it's, it, it is an interesting legal question to pose whether the HRC complaint would have triggered a filing to post. I think that that's, you know, my guess is that hasn't occurred in the Commonwealth yet, hasn't been litigated, don't really, I don't know if people have an, uh, an, um, have an answer to that, but that might, I could see that as a triggering. I'm not sure if the freedom of information violation, if there was one, would have triggered, um, would have triggered a, a post because the, the 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 HRC complaint very clearly states that there that there raises the issue of bias and so the three categories are bias, serious bodily harm, and you know um, um, it death. might be death. Right, right. So so the, inf the freedom of information I'm not sure of the HRC re um, complaint because it raises a question of bias. Pro probably, I don't know, that might have might have been a trigger. I, I, I think um, as I think that that you know that's it's still post is still trying to figure out all of their procedures and policies and we're still sort of in a in a gray area where compliance is concerned. And the presentation that they did today, I think they said that they're, um, they've reviewed around, if I have the numbers right, maybe around um, 8,000 um, uh, uh, police officer certifications, um, about two, maybe a, a little bit over 200 have been um, not, uh, decertified. Um, and some of those are resignations. Um, some of those are, um, have, uh, are, are pending, so you know they're they're still in the process of, of 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 really figuring out all of their internal um, processes and um, trying to work with the legislature and some of the executive board about um, executive branch about a number of different things. Um, you know what what parts of the complaints can be made public. You know th there was just a lot. I that webinar which will probably be available in the next day or so I would be happy to share it's a little difficult to hear because the um, the sound wasn't great but um, we've also been promised to receive the PowerPoint slides and I that information could be could be shared with this group as well that would I be just, great thank you um and I, I don't mean to cut you off. It's just we're it's yeah. so I, I want to get us to a decision because I think um, Allegra makes a really good suggestion that in lieu of a resident oversight board, 
at least the um, HRC and the CSSJC could do the work on behalf of the community of um, bringing to the attention, right, of um, the state uh, certain issues regarding adherence to post. And this seems like um, a really likely one because um, what was brought up, maybe not, you know, excessive force, certainly there is discrimination um, that uh, the, the complainant, the, the, the parent um, pointed out, and, and it's a complaint. Well, you know, we're, we're not here to adjudicate that or whatever, but it's their complaint. Um, and then unprofessionalism. So, you know, was that at least written up and brought to the attention of the state as being uh, someone's complaint within the community? So I, I think this is a, a gray area, but it's an area that maybe we could um, help to clarify, get some clarification. If I may, I yes. think since we have knowledge of this already and we found out that the town did not file a complaint, I think it is our duty to file the complaint. I know it's kind of late, but it's the symbolism around it. I think. HRC and CSJC, you know, we should file a complaint and send it to post. And I don't know how you all feel. Um, because I was under the impression that, you know, when compliant, that's what the police chief said in one of the town council meeting. And that's, you know, I remember him saying, you know, started, you know, some of his officers have been certified and everything, mm -hmm. compliant with post, everything. So Obviously, he didn't tell us, you know, the whole story. And I think I still strongly feel that we need to file a complaint to post. I know the two day has lapsed, but we still need to do it. Well, I think the two days is a stipulation from yeah. my reading for the police that their obligation is two day window to file it for the public. Um, I'm not sure that that two day window is that your understanding, Pam? Yeah, I don't, I don't think there is a statute of limitations right. on complaints from the public. Right, thank you. I so, mean, ideally it would be, I'm sorry to interrupt you, ideally it would be good for HRC to do it, but I think it will even be stronger to have two town committee to jointly file it. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's what we're here for. We're not yeah. here for, um, uh, uh, to be popular or something. We're here to improve our community. History will judge each and every one of us how we've helped to have we've done to move our community forward. We need to do the right thing. So I think it needs to be worded um, you know, in a particular way to talk about, you know, the police were obligated, according to post, to file within two days we have found out that is not true or there's some discrepancy um, in that filing, but we also want to uh, make sure that this complaint has been lodged with the state. So it that's goes right. on record. Yeah. Are yeah, we, I think, yeah. I, I think that's what we need. I don't know if we need to necessarily say, well, we found out it's not true. I mean, we don't know, you know what I'm saying? I just think we just need to say, hey, you know, we're not sure whether it was filed or not. Just in it case wasn't. It wasn't filed, then let's do it. It wasn't. I don't need me to interrupt you. Allegra, do you mind reading the letter? No, I know. I, I read the letter. I read okay. the letter. Well, for the public, reason. for the people in the audience, if they, they haven't read it. I will read it. Hold on. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah, our town didn't, didn't file any complaint. Yeah. So, yeah. I want it to be on record. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so pursuant to a, a public record request dated November 18th, 2022, pursuant to MGL chapter 66, section 10 and 950 CMR 32, the Peace Officer Standards and Training Commission, in parentheses, commission, 
hereby responds to your public records request dated November 18th, 2022. In your request, you stated, please furnish all complaint submissions related to the Amherst Police Department in your records to date. I am specifically looking for complaints since June 2022 and any dispositions related to an incident on July 4th to 5th, 2022. After, um, that was the pleas to July 4, 5, 2022 was the initial request. Um, after a diligent search, the commission has not uncovered any record responsive to your request. Nothing contained herein should be construed as a waiver of any rights, privileges, protections, immunities, claims, or defenses that may be available to the commission, all of which are expressly preserved. Thank you. So, no, no filing of uh, mm -hmm. complaint on, on behalf of our APD <laughs> to post. So we need to file. Yeah. So are so, we in agreement? Yeah, Philip, I don't want to put you on the spot, but you need to go back to your group and see what they think about the whole situation. If they want to file it themselves, that's fine. If they want us to join with your group, that's fine too. You know, either way, but it needs to be filed. I don't care if it's HRC or CSSJC or combination. It needs to happen. That's why we have these committees. It's called social justice, right? So okay. Phil, what do you what do you think about that? I'm okay with either. I mean, I will bring it up to the HRC and I imagine that we will probably vote to file if this committee also wants to file. I think that that's perfect too. I think having multiple avenues will be great. Uh, I will go on record though, since I was the one that filed the complaint on behalf of the HRC, that it was filed on 7-21-2022 in regards to the town of Amherst report of alleged police misconduct. And the brief paragraph that I gave was, this complaint is being made against the two officers involved in an incident with the police or with Amherst youth on July 4th. This incident involved a majority BIPOC group of youth that received a noise complaint while waiting for AAA to arrive. The officers asked for IDs, which then resulted in a abuse of power by the officers that led to them or to telling one of the youths, you have no rights. This complaint is being filed by the Amherst Human Rights Commission that I am co-chair of. The Amherst Human Rights Commission believes that a human rights violation had been committed by the officers by them stating that these youths do not have rights. The Amherst Human Rights Commissions would like to inquire about actions taken towards these officers to ensure that this situation does not happen again. So there you go, complaint you go. <laughs> and, and wanting follow-up. So um, I think whatever we, we file and send should have that letter as well attached to it because that is definitively um, a complaint. <laughs> Not to mention the, the parent uh, who uh, you know, sent their letter in. And I don't know, maybe we have to seek permission uh, to get that, uh, to, to utilize that letter. It's actually two letters. So are we, um, and uh, are, are we agreeing that Allegra and I will uh, draft something? Do you all want to see it before we send it? It sounds like Phil has to uh, present this to uh, HRC anyway. When's the next meeting for HRC? I believe it's sometime in the week of the 19th. Oh, okay. So not, not too far out. Yep. So are we in accord or? Do we need to take a vote? So what what are we saying? Right. Are we doing something jointly? Are we doing something ourselves? Or what what's the so Phil says that on the 19th they're having a meeting for HRC and he's going to present very similarly what we're we're discussing mm -hmm. here. Um, on the 21st, actually. Sorry. Oh, the 21st. Oh, okay. So it's even further out. So yeah. it depends. Two you weeks know, away. Yeah, if we want if we want to wait that long, uh certainly you all could 
do your own uh, through the HRC, and then we could send something through the CSSJC. Yeah, I think that might be better, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that might be I want to. I want to hear from Freke. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't have much to say. I just would. I think it's it's only appropriate that we um, are in agreement about the language for the timing, and so um, once it's drafted, um, if that could be sent by email and we have a look, um, that'll be fine. Okay, so we would send it to Pam and Jennifer, and then they would send, um, I, I believe that's the process, <laughs> uh, then they would send it to, uh, excuse me, the committee. Yeah, and then we just wouldn't reply all, we would just reply. Yeah, we will not yeah. yeah. Just Sounds reply good. to them. Okay. okay. They would share it with you all. Yeah. In terms of editing. Yeah. All right. Are we okay on that? It's easier if we have dates, like when do you guys think you can draft it? I know this is busy month for everybody, you know, when do you, yeah, things like that. I find out that when, when you put dates to projects, you know, people then, oh, I need to respond back. Yeah. Right. So when do you guys think you can draft something? Well, this okay. week is filled up for me. <laughs> yeah, I can, I could maybe get to something this weekend, um, next Wednesday, I'm pretty free so I can try and work on it then as well. Um, so look at my but, calendar here. Yeah. Um, so so next, if, if, if I send something to, so can I send something to D by next Wednesday and then D can send it to, D can kind of edit things and send to Pamela and Jennifer to send to the group is that that's still kosher that's mm -hmm. that's an okay way to do it yeah okay <laughs> all right well let's do that that oh, would be then, really helpful okay and then you just need to have like a deadline for people to yeah. get back yeah but, but I I think like if whoever doesn't get back or whatever I think we keep it moving you know what I'm saying yeah. mm -hmm. you have to hear back from everybody mm -hmm. so so it sounds like we're in agreement with starting the process to file in this particular case and yes. i know miss pat had brought up earlier should we vote about whether this would be a process we would want to do hopefully not on a regular basis but like in, in until rob is up and running is is this an alter and i just i want to make sure that people are on the same page about that if that's um if that's something we want to agree on whether that's formally or just yeah, I don't know if it needs formal agreement because each time it will need a discussion right. to to make a decision about an action, yeah. right? Right. So I don't know. I, uh, we could certainly vote on it. I would be in agreement, but I'm I'm just not sure that that's what we we need. We'd have to have deliberation anyway. Right. I'm flexible either way. For the sake of time, if we don't vote, that's fine. If we do. That's fine. Ideally, HRC will be the, you know, the first group committee to to get the complaint. But um, if they come to us, then we'll, we'll file with post. But Absolutely. We'll assume that people will just, you know, go to HRC. I could be wrong. Well, I hope I hope people come to us as well yeah. um, about it. But yeah, you're right. How it's yeah. set up in the town, they would go to HRC first. Yeah. Okay, so we're in agreement. Yeah. Do yeah. we still want to vote? Do if y'all want to make a motion, vote? if y'all want to make a motion, go ahead. We're we're just the co-chairs. Y'all go. Allegra, go ahead. Make a motion. <laughs> um. Okay. Because I'm bossy. That I tell people to do what to to do stuff. Go ahead, do it. Thank you. Well, so I think that we should. Um, I'm gonna. I make a motion to write things and send them to D to send to Jen to send to everybody. No, else no, no, not that post. No. <laughs> oh, you're talking about post to post. Okay. Are you? Are we talking about in particular or in? You're tired, darling. Okay. I am tired. Hold <laughs> up, Miss Pat. Uh, Freke, you have your hand up. Yes. Yeah. Frankly, I'd be interested in what that motion would be. Um, I 
um, based on our discussion. I'm not sure that it's necessary, given again, that we already will have deliberations, which will lead to a decision on possible action. Um, and so different incidents might end up showing and it would be left to us after deliberation to decide on what that case is. I think what a motion would do would be um, to incentivize us to have that as the only possible action at the end, which um, may be appropriate, but at this point is unwise. It is, I think, the most effective means we have for moving things forward. And perhaps we can keep it that way, but um, it doesn't need, I don't think it needs to be put up for a vote. I would I also, um, I would I'm second gonna... that, that I don't think there needs to be a motion in that if this group just collectively knows that as a tool to use, then we could just all decide to bring it up when that comes up. I'm with that, Phil. So we have a motion. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. We're very easy with this. Group. Okay, great. <laughs> all right. So we, we know how to proceed for this particular complaint. Yeah. All right. So can we move on? Yes. Great. So, Deborah, you want to rephrase your, your question that you had at the top of the meeting? Well, no, I just wanted to um, look at, because with all the um, information that was included for this meeting, all the mm -hmm. way on the very bottom, it talks about the motion, I guess, right. that was passed at the town council. So I just wanted us to look at that, right, to see you know, what this really means in terms of what the town council is going to be doing, whether it, it kind of equates the demands that we had sent out early on after the incident. Um, you know, like, for instance, the, the compensation fund, the just compensation fund is not mentioned. That's, that was left out. That's right. one of the really striking areas that was left out. Um, but to kind of analyze that, have some discussion and see if we want to do anything in terms of follow up. Absolutely. So, so yeah. is uh, Dorothy, Pam, and Michelle Miller still in the audience? And we have Alicia too. Oh, and Alicia, that fantastic. Um, Alicia, would you, um, is it okay, gang, if uh, Alicia was brought in to discuss uh, this motion and what it would mean? As long as they can do that, can they do that? <laughs> public comment well she's yeah but so if, if we as long as we bring her in to to discuss it yeah so it's not public comment but um there's less uh there's not enough of them to make a quorum for uh right. the town council so i think they could be brought in as panelists if they um so i'll bring the three of them um in as panelists if that's your desire yes. That would be great. Thank you. Thanks, Pamela, because that was my question. <laughs> or any of them, you know, either Alicia or yeah. So they're coming. They're, they're there. Michelle. And Thank Michelle. You. Yeah. Awesome. So Alicia, do you want to uh, speak to this first? And then we can ask um, Michelle and Dorothy. Can we put that up on the on the screen? Remember the, at the end? Oh, yes. Okay, the let, last me, page. let me find it, yeah. Yeah, the last page of our um, meeting agenda notes. Yeah. So. Well, we're it. doing that. I just want to really acknowledge the counselors that really, you know, supported CSWG and uh, CSSJC. I don't want to miss anybody's names. Here we are. Yep. Is this one, yep. Yeah. And move all this other stuff out of the way. Okay. And let me know if you want to scroll down. So is Alicia there? Hello. Hi, everyone. Yes, thank you. Um, so I have just a couple of comments. Thank you all for um, inviting me in here to your meeting um, and for all of the work that you're doing. So I would honestly prefer if either Michelle or Dorothy would speak speak to the motion and I want to explain why very quickly. Um, <clears throat> I actually did not support this motion um, and not because I think it's bad. I think this is like, these are all great things. Um, 
but I, I would prefer that somebody who supported it would speak to it. And then I would be happy to offer more comments later if you all would like more comments later, but I, I would just prefer if someone else um, presented it. So Alicia, one quick question though. I thought yes. the ones on the bottom though, the re recommend town manager to work on, didn't you um, um, do some of those? No, her motion oh. is not here. So oh, I, it's not there at yes. all. No. I proposed a separate motion that separate. also did pass, but it, it was not this motion. Oh, so we didn't add yours. Okay, I thought we I had. I thought that the bottom two yeah. bullets were. Was something that you recommended, yeah. Because I can't was... see. So recommend, so the one, recommend a town manager to work with the police department to review and update if appropriate, select like the policies of the police department. This review shall be included. Oh, okay, yeah. yes, sorry, I apologize. So yes, I, pro I proposed, um, I can't remember how many, sorry, different motions that night, but yeah, a few. Um, mm -hmm. And so um, two of them passed. One of them is the second to last bullet. That's one complete motion. And then yes, the last bullet was the second motion. So those are two separate motions that passed. Yeah, can you talk to those since we have you and then we can talk about them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I actually got these directly from the CS WG report. Um, and so I know that there are a number of recommendations in there that have not yet been addressed by the council, but these ones I saw as directly pertaining to the incident that occurred and that if these things would have happened that they could essentially help to prevent situations like that from occurring again. Um, and so I decided that it was an appropriate time to re-highlight these things. Um, and so I proposed them all separately because I thought that together it might not pass, but that at least I could get certain portions of it passed, if not everything everyone agreed on. Um, and so the first one, uh, recommend the town manager work with the police department to review and update if appropriate selected policies of the police department. This came directly from the LEAP report. And mm -hmm. so they actually included in the report um, samples or examples of what recommendations to the actual changes to these policies could be. Um, so there is existing documents as to recommendations to how those policies could possibly be addressed. Um, but they ended up going with the use of force policy, the consent searches, uh, low level and pretextual stops. Um, so the town manager and the police department should be reviewing these policies. Um, and then the second motion was the recommendation that the town manager work with the police department in building upon its current efforts um, and identifying steps to develop a proactive anti-racist culture in the police department and that it be documented and regular updates be provided to the council, um, which also came directly from the CSWG report. And just to sort of uh, shift the lens from being just not racist to proactively anti-racist mm -hmm. was the emphasis for this motion here. So um, just for me with those two, you know, obviously, you know, awesome. And, and of course it came from CSWG. So for me, I think where we could be helpful in terms of, of, of you know, making sure that these things kind of get worked on is in terms of timelines and deadlines. Um, because I don't, you know, it just kind of says town manager, you know, to work with the police department. Yeah, that could be a year from now, that could be what have you, you know. So um, can you provide any thoughts on that? Or do you want us to discuss it and come up with a timeline? Because I mean, that's what I would be interested in, it would be deadlines for, for the town manager to get these things done. Yeah, Alicia. Yeah, go ahead, Alicia. Um, just to respond to that, Deborah. So I, um, the, so this would be a good thing to advocate for um, in terms of town manager goals. Mm -hmm. If that's something that you want to see happening more quickly. Um, I know that I personally will be advocating for that. So mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things, but there hasn't been a timeline as of yet. Um, so depending on whether or not that will be included in the goals, that might make a difference between like how quickly things start to happen, if that makes sense. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Absolutely. So town manager goals is on our agenda, whether we get there or not. I do want to emphasize, as Alicia emphasized, town manager goals, this is no small issue. When we started this process two and a half years ago, um, a handful of people in this community submitted a document to the town council and to the town manager regarding the town manager's goals to put in issues of equity and already we were thinking about DEI. And so those were the things that we stipulated as a community, we wanted to see the town manager do within the year. And whether it took a year, two and a half years, we are there. If they are not in the town manager's goals, he has no, op and, and written and, and voted on by the town council, he has no obligation to meet any of it. That's simply how it works. So, all right. Thank you, Alicia. Who, uh, Dorothy or Michelle, would you like to speak to uh, these other items here? Dorothy, I'd be happy to just, I have a couple observations if that's okay, Dorothy. You good with that? Yeah, yes, I'm very fine with that. <laughs> okay, I'm driving, um, so I, I hope you can hear me okay. Yes. Okay, great. Um, so I think that the point that Dee just brought up and actually that Alicia raised and then that Dee um, pointed out about town manager goals, I think is critical. So town manager goals are being discussed on Monday evening. They were postponed from this past Monday. And so we have an extra town council meeting happening this Monday at the normal time. Um, so if a member of this group would be available to attend to speak at public comment, or if some written comment can be sent in, um, we can also, Alicia, Dorothy, myself, we can also, as Alicia said, advocate during that meeting um, to make sure that I know, for example, in the current draft, Alicia's motion pertaining to the um, anti-racism racism training with the police department has specifically been added and even the date um, of the motion is in the goals to reference that. Um, and it also expands to say that the uh, town managers should begin working with all departments, but beginning with the APD as agreed to in that motion. Um, so we can certainly uh, work on getting other specific items into the town manager goals. We'll be finalizing those goals at GOL on Wednesday the 14th. So there will be some time between Monday the 12th when we discuss it as a full council and Wednesday the 14th for you all to provide additional feedback to us in those couple days. Uh, so that when we provide a final recommendation, it will include everything. Um, and then the other uh, point I wanted to observe is in the first motion, there's language in there about the reporting needing to go to both the HRC and the CSSJC. I think there's, I can't read it because I'm driving, but there's like a two week window in which you all would review whatever the report is. And oh, item seven. Item seven, yes. develop a communications plan to raise awareness in the community about these efforts that the town manager will report on actions to be taken and our progress in addressing the above no later than four months from the date of this vote. Okay. And then, yes. and then well, and then like draft reports to be available to the council, the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee and the Human Rights Commission as well exactly. as, as the public. And then, and then they're supposed to share a report with us, provide advice to town council five days prior to the time. Yeah, before, so that we can share advice to the town council five days prior to the town council meeting. Yes, and I think that's a really critical um, point in which if whatever reporting comes back in that, at that four month mark um, to be able to provide feedback at that time. That's not to say that you can't through Pamela, of course, I think who will be providing updates as you as she moves along with the work. But I think that that's a critical juncture in really um, 
providing either written or verbal feedback mm -hmm. when you get those reports. Agreed. So and it has the, everyone working together and, and listening exactly. to one another. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I just really want to publicly appreciate um, Alicia for the mm. additional motions that she brought, because um, I think that it really kind of pushed maybe the council into some uh, further expansion and discomfort. Mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> But it, it really got us to drill into these, um, you know, pieces that were kind of been going in circles around. And so I think that it was um, it was really helpful to have those additional pieces added. Um, so absolutely. That's, that's my observations right now. And I, I'm not sure if Darcy has others. No, thank you, Michelle. And I, I have you. to say, Alicia, uh, if it were not for Alicia's presence on the town council and her persistence. Yes. In, in the face of, I, I have to just call it, of being marginalized oftentimes on the town council, um, this would not appear there. And, you know, and just to appreciate not only her persistence, but her intellect in, yes. in drafting this. Um, thank you. Uh, Dorothy. Well, I just want to second what you said. Uh, after every town council meeting, I am absolutely amazed at both Alicia and Michelle yeah. for yeah. just thinking on their feet, being so clear, saying things in, in, in ways that I can't gather it together. Um, so I'm just, we're very, very appreciative. Um, and because we do so much and get so confused, um, I would appreciate if you could send me a link to this document. Sometimes after the end of the meeting, it's hard to remember, what did we do? You know, I mean, they go on forever and ever and ever. So if you could please send me this document because I remember this issue and I'd, I'd love to have it handy. Thank you so much. Absolutely, Dorothy. Thank you for what you do. Any questions for our three council members that have taken time to be with us this evening? Well, I guess for me, um, I, I would want to you know, I, I get it that it's saying there because I'm I'm more kind of focused on timelines and everything because obviously this happened back in July, right? In terms of getting um, some type of solution and addressing, um, you know, what happened, and obviously now is going to take another four months or, or what have you. So um, my thing is, okay, how are we going to get? How is the community going to get updates that this is getting done? Um, because already, like I said, one of the glaring omissions is the um, just compensation fund that's not here, mm -hmm. uh, which was something that we really wanted um, in terms of, of our demands <clears throat> that would have been for the families, for the, the um, young people that were impacted and uh, for the, um, you know, for the parents and families, and that's not here. Um, you know, I get it that, you know, the town manager finally apologized, which Thankfully, that happened. But to this day, we got no apology from the chief. We got no apology from anyone else that represents the APD. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so there's glaring, um, you know, gaps in, in this motion, as we know there they would be, because that's why this motion, you know, was passed. Um, so, you know, I, I think there needs to be more kind of deadlines, timelines, and also updates. To, to, to the community to say, okay, you know, this is what we're working on, this is what's happening. Um, and, you know, you know, I don't see that. And how, how can that happen? Right, and I, I appreciate that, Deborah, because again, linking these items to the town manager goals and even specifying which is something the GOL, I, I attended the GOL committee meeting that is defining or, or trying to redefine what are town manager goals. Uh, some council members wanted to take out the specificity, feeling that it holds the, the town manager too tightly to a plan and that he can't be more flexible <laughs> during the year. Um, I disagree. If there is no specificity such as within the year town manager, we would like to see 
this happening and then we'll you know evaluate that right um that needs to be written into the town manager goal so we could suggest in terms of timelines in that way um within the year and then get the town council and the town manager to drill down on you know we're going to be checking in in three months or four months or or what have you um those types of things but have a year in which we say this is what we want to see this is what we want to see you do town manager because it's your job to do that um oh yeah alicia uh has her hand up and then Vera. Sorry, I think I just forgot to take it down earlier. Oh, okay. Um, so Vera, you're gonna be able to talk during the public comment. Is that okay? Okay, Miss Pat, you have your hand up. So I just want to pre appreciate um, Councillor Michelle, Alicia and Dorothy and other councillors who continue to support us even when issues are very difficult and unpopular. For me, my whole impression about this motion is a show to me because we're, you know, like one to four, the first four or five uh, items to me is like one to four. It's repeating what CSWG already worked on. And then number five, is really the one that really gets me very, very frustrated. Exploring Youth Empowerment Center for real. That is no commitment. That says nothing to me, is the point I'm trying to, to say. It's just like complete waste of time that night, just to show that, the, you know, that is the motion that's been proposed. Um, another thing is the anti-racist, that was uh, being proposed, I think it's good. Re you know, I did request information about consultants and contractors, okay, that APD deal with. And I was particularly interested in trainings. And the document were sent to us, uh, to CSJC. And what I saw there seems to me, most of the trainings is mostly towards law enforcement. Yes, there is um, maybe a couple consultants, one local one that, you know, will do a social justice type of training. But um, my point being that APD claims that they are working on, you know, um, anti-racist and it's not showing. It doesn't show from what I requested for CSJC to look at you know, 10 year period, I did not see any um, names of consultants who specialize in doing diversity training and social justice training, except for one or two. Most of the funding was more like reimbursement for trainings that officers go to and, you know, meals, um, hotel, whatever. And so let's us be real with this motion. Like what is it exactly is going to happen? We need timeline and we need action. It's not just a piece of paper like document collecting dust. I don't have too much faith on this, on this motion unless if we really, really push hard and start you know, pushing for results. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. So I, I think it's twofold. I think, yes, there are, particularly at the very front there, um, it, it replicates what the CSWG um, asked for, intended. Um, it just, and it lacks specificity. Re-emphasizing, some of this stuff uh, as CSWG originating, I think is important to rework that because as, as you have said, uh, Ms. Pat, this place has a very uh, short memory. And so I think it would be helpful to re-emphasize 
CSWG um, made this uh, proposal and it needs to be fulfilled. You know, organize a review of public safety protocols, um, all of these things that are, are you know, uh, coming from the CSWG reports, if, if we could, you know, point the origination, I think it would be helpful to remind people. However, there are things such as the number seven, develop a communications plan. I actually feel very strongly we need that in this community because if it were not for Phil being on this committee, you know, maybe one or two of us attending the HRC committee, but some of us don't have time to attend yet another committee meeting. So it's important that we have a space or a process in which we can all communicate together and work together to build capacity. So number seven, uh, I think we, we need to, to emphasize that. And again, have a timeline. We want this within the year, okay? Um, you know, and we can go through this and figure out what is new. Here, as Alicia, you know, introduced, these are things from the CSWG. Well, again, emphasize this is this is a reiteration or reworking of this, but we want to see it within the year, you know. Um, I, so I don't think it's all a show is what I'm saying, Ms. Pat. I think some of it, yeah, because it's performative, because they present this stuff, and then there's no action attached to it. I see it as an opportunity to try to demand, <laughs> excuse me, demand action within the year. And we have people now on the town council who are willing to, uh, to with us, make sure that the town manager does this as planned, you know, under, under the goals. So I don't wanna throw it all out, I guess. I'd say, let, let's rework it. Folks who are able to attend on Monday, um, you know, maybe they can either read it or we could send in a statement. So I don't know how people feel about that. I think I like the suggestion of uh, Councillor Michelle, you know, if we can have one or two rep, you know, to speak um, about this, I think that would be fantastic. I think my worry about naming this a show, next spring is sort of like transitional period. I know some of us will be off, will be getting off you know, this committee and it's election year for, you know, town councillors. you know, there's just a lot. And it will be around the time we're talking about resident oversight board. We're going to be talking about visioning of our community. How are you going to do visioning when, you know, the youth perspective were not included here. There's no, you know, um, victim compensation. I mean, I would like people to prove me wrong, but our town, the way it is, I just hope we still have people who will be able to push it through because this could drag through next fall. We don't know who is going to get elected in town council and God help us about yes. it. So that's, I mean, that's the reality. This is the, you know, this is the history of our town. Yeah. So that's, you know, I would have loved to see something like two months timeline that would have given me more confidence but for some reason this committee and very few has appointment for one year how is somebody going to be effective to serve on one year on a committee so we'll okay. see it's just you know these are you know real concerns like it sounds good great in paper mm -hmm. And if we're pushing for four months timeline, I don't know. So Michelle, are there um, suggestions you can make to make this uh, stronger 
in terms of attaching this to town manager goals? It's a great question. Um, I'm going to let me take a look at this and compare it up to what we have as a working draft for the town manager goals. Okay. And then I will provide some feedback to the co-chairs and Pamela mm -hmm. um, and Jennifer and and then you can figure out how to sort of work with that in terms of coming, uh, bringing reps on Monday. We're certainly ha happy to represent if timing doesn't allow, we will be there to advocate for and represent, but we can also represent if you're not able to be there. Um, one other thought I have is uh, Pamela, of course, will be providing updates at your meetings as you're continuing to meet uh, over the next few months, mm -hmm. but the liaisons to the committee, Dorothy and uh, Pat, could request the town manager to include, and he may do this already because he's gotten pretty good at doing this, but he could include some update in the town manager report, you know, on a biweekly basis uh, or a monthly basis or something, whatever is agreed upon, um, so that there's some sense, because I think what Deb pointed out actually is really critical. Hey, buddy, I'm going to be done in just one second, sweetie. Um, I think what Deb pointed out about the community and the public being aware that progress is being made, um, it's really, really critical. So I think that's one way for that to occur. Um, and I'm going to brainstorm and try to you know think about some other ways that we might keep this committee informed as well as the public informed and have, as you said, D, that 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 sense that we we are in this together and we're we're all working together um, to move these things forward. Okay. Yeah, we'd appreciate your your feedback on that. I for one, I'm gonna be flying on the 12th. So um I I won't be available at all. So that's um, I'd like to get some feedback soon <laughs> in order to at least know some of these things we discussed will um, go forward for the Monday night meeting. Yes, I will. I will endeavor to get you something by the end of the day tomorrow, and then hopefully that will give us some time to, to so that we can make sure that it's sort of settled prior to the 12th. Okay. Um, and I am so sorry. My son just jumped in the car. Yeah. So I'm, <laughs> okay. thank you. Thank you. Lo lo thank you. Lots thank you. of um, appreciation and, and respect and gratitude to all of you. So we thank love you. you. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Love you too. Oh. Bye. Uh, all right. Bye. So any comments, Deb, how did, uh, you know, I, I know it falls short, um, a lot. Um, how do you feel about that process at least from monday yeah i mean i think if we can get it together you know i know for me too i'm super busy so yeah i'm not even going to be able i can't make a meeting or anything like that this next week is is craziness so yeah um but yeah it, you know how are we going to get it before the town council <laughs> right the question with the short timeline you know um wednesday and we got to get everything to them by the uh, probably before oh no no it just has to be read right yeah that's all that's all and if people you know anyone from this committee um can attend the meeting they can also during public comment you know have have some comments about the motion um what it's lacking what's needed you know the town manager goals in general so you know this is something that's already passed but it's like okay town council attach it to the town manager goals because at least it'll have uh, a, a year timeline. I mean, it could have more specific timeline, of course, but within that year, they'll be evaluating, has the town manager met the items that are attached, the, the items that are attached to his goals? I wondered if it would be a lot easier to put it in writing and maybe says JC can request that it be read because at town council meeting I've seen some town councillors reading you know letter or document that somebody sent to them maybe we can request that 
like obviously we are all very busy and of extended so it's one way out just to request that whatever we write to town council is read that night if none of us are available to attend yeah most definitely um can anyone attend monday night what time is it well you know it's one of those Next town setting. council meetings <laughs> and if you miss the if you miss the uh, public comment that's over you don't have second chance right that's the problem and, they usually and that's usually in the first. beginning yeah that is if you're there on time yeah right. that's the problem yeah. is always the trick yeah um i mean i can try <laughs> I, think I, so tired. I know or or again we, we can send send in our comments um and uh send them into town council members mm -hmm. and like you say miss pat they could either <laughs> either read them or you know emphasize our points so alicia michelle dorothy mm -hmm. pam um so the beauty uh, of reading it is the media might pick it up sure you know, that's the unless if we physically alternatively we can send a copy to the media that yep. way if they didn't read it you know media will print it for us right the, that's true yeah. too that's yeah. true too i and i i think you know if allegra if we want to work on this the budget can be attached to these items mm -hmm. you know again budgets represent values uh and priorities in towns so um these uh equity and social justice issues that we are dealing with and that that motion represents um they represent also uh time and money you know who's going to work on them you know it's dei is a crest um you know that's that's time and money that's budget so anyway there's a way in which to craft it within that scope as well um but again attaching attaching it to town manager goals is important all right so, so who's doing so who's doing this task i'm confused well we already have a budget advocacy letter and what i'm proposing is that the budget advocacy letter can include some aspect of okay. these motions. Good. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Do people agree? Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. I'm looking at time. It's nine o'clock. We've been pushing the upper fund for a long time now. And I just wanted to comment quickly about my request Wait, for so, consultants. Just so you know, I actually, so my son is over here, you know, saying, you know, mom please so i'm gonna uh, unfortunately i'm gonna have to go um and just to say quickly for january meeting you all can just set it up whenever you 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 want to just because I, i'm gonna be away in january so you know on vacation um enjoy uh, where are you going home back to my country nice okay bird so yeah <laughs> thank you yeah. um so yeah so i'm just gonna okay have a okay. good holiday. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. All yeah. right. Well, let's try to get through ARPA here um, and try to close up our, our meeting. Um, Ms. Pat, did you want to discuss it? And should I put something on the screen here? It's OK. So first of all, I appreciate that the document I requested was sent. However, it wasn't complete. And so that's like a source of frustration for me because I specifically requested that it includes by break it down by race. Minority owned businesses could be also include white women. And I don't have any problem for you know, our local businesses uh, getting the, the upper funds. I'm more curious to see how it's distributed, you know in terms of people of color. And I couldn't get that information based on the document that was sent. And again, it's just frustrating, waste of time. And I want to request that again for our next meeting. That's all I have to say on that. Very quickly about the request for consultant and um, 
consultant and contractors, well, what we got um, was more than that, but I'll start with a positive. It's good to know that our town, you know, our taxpayers, you know, go back to our community for different services that they provide. I think that's wonderful. Uh, what is glaring for me is that that came that jump up to me is that we you know we spend a lot of money on vehicle maintenance which we should because it's after all it's APD but we do have I want to remind you know APD that we do have people of color who have garage um, that we could also uh, patronize and take some of the APD vehicles there also to repair. So what comes to my mind is that Spanish guy on Belchertown, Belchertown Road that has a um, um, garage. Is that an auto garage or something? We have Middle Eastern that has auto express. So if we can just like, if our town can remember to do business with more diverse mm -hmm. businesses in our town would be helpful is the message. So in terms of training, I already alluded to it for the sake of time. I'm not going to dwell into it, but APD has continued to make us believe that they get diversity training and everything. I requested for that and it couldn't tell me the type of training they're getting, but there are some contracts or business, uh, some the local one in Greenfield, it seems like more of Law, uh, law enforcement type of training. So again, I'm frustrated. The information that was sent to us, you know, is very, you know, insufficient. I I couldn't make much out of it. Very frustrating. Another another reason is the fact that some people wanted to know, you know, who is doing business with the with APD. So when people make public comments. So we know, you know where their perspective is. And this, the document that we received did show white people, you know, would defend MS police, you know? So if people want to get more information, they can go and review it. I'm not mentioning names, but I think it's public record now. People can, can access it through, you know, the packet we received tonight. So when people coming out to, either um, demonize the MS youth of July 5th, we know where they're coming from. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. So the document I saw, and, and maybe I'm, I'm saying the wrong thing, not about the police part, but the ARPA funds. Yeah. Um, it does, it doesn't break it down what type of minority owned business. Exactly. Yeah, but it, it does say minority owned business. So it, it could be- It could be white women. Women, women are considered yeah. minority owned business. Certainly, yeah. certainly, certainly. Yeah. Um, so I, I see what you're saying. That would be helpful to break it out of gender uh, and, so, and yeah. have race. race. I am yeah. looking for race because mm -hmm. I had three black owned businesses in yes. this town that I reach out to you that are you aware of HAPA funding? Right. And they said they didn't. Right. And when I asked them to contact, they were told it was too late. When I asked them, you know, did you guys even know about that? And nobody reached out to them. They did not know anything about it. Right. And so that report that we received, that document that we received, did not mention people that I contacted who contacted Chamber of Commerce. I did not see their businesses listed, but they did. And these are black owned businesses. One restaurant, Jamaican restaurant, mm -hmm. hairdresser, the only black owned black hairdresser in town and the Spanish auto garage. Right. They did not know anything about the funding. And then we keep getting the fact that bid is saying that they didn't they didn't charge any service fee. But yeah. bid got a lot of money for Drake. They got a lot of money. Why? Because they have access to our town manager. So this issue is not solved yet. 
we will continue the conversation next time. Yeah. So it's an issue of equity. Being, the reason being that we didn't get the complete information that I asked for. So who got the money by race? Mm -hmm. How much? We didn't get that. But we have bid was given rich, wealthy landlords got a lot of money from APA. And they're saying they didn't charge any money to distribute money to small owned businesses. So this issue is not rested. I, I want to I got this you. forum to yes. request for Ms. Young, are you listening to me? I want to request for once more uh, uh, um, grant money from APA funding that BIPOC businesses received from, from town and the amount. Thank you. So thank you, uh, Ms. Pat. Uh, and thank you for even requesting this um, because it's an issue of equity. I do wanna ask Pam, do you know if um, within the information you are sent or given, is there a breakdown in terms of uh, how people identify racially? So I, I don't know. I mean, obviously all of the requests have gone to the finance director. And okay. um, from my understanding, these reports were, well, I know the reports were generated from that department, but I don't know what detail they have or whether they have, um, I'm, I'm assuming somebody could answer um, to break down the those categories um, by race, but I don't know that, and I, you know, it's not information that I would have um, access to. We're getting the information from the finance director. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. So, Ms. Pat, I know you have helped people fill out these these ARPA fund applications. Mm -hmm. Is there a space there to designate race, or does it simply say minority owned? So basically, when I reach out to them, I told them to contact Chamber of Commerce, and I uh -huh. promised that I will help them with the process. Okay. They came back to me and said that they were too late to apply. Okay, so you haven't seen the application to know if there's a space in which I have. It, it's on, on. It's actually on the website on Chamber okay. of Commerce. It's there. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So there is a space to to indicate racial designation, oh, racial I don't, identification. I don't, recall, I don't know. I don't okay. know. But, but the town, the point of it is that the town claim that they're going to give priority to, right. to business of color. And, and then in terms of reality, that's not what has happened. I understand. I understand. So, because but, I already Googled all the businesses that received the funding. Right. I know their racial... Uh, break down, but I don't want to know. We don't have time to discuss that. And that's not the point. I think any business that need the money should get it. It's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is like, how many BIPOC benefited from it is my point. No, I and I get your point. I'm Equity, simply yeah. trying, yeah, I'm simply yeah. trying to understand um, how those categories um, are uh, uh, tabulated, how they are indicated, within the application process and then within how the chamber distributes that. So um, it sounds like, you know, uh, that there is a, a place in which to indicate racial identification. So why aren't we getting that? So, okay, I, I think that's a fair, that's a, that's a fair question. And, and as you say, we'll take it up some more. I think this has to be another aspect of our, it is, it's already an aspect of our equity work. Um, I think, you know, with you working on this, Ms. Pat, mm -hmm. um, maybe it could be another member also working on this, but um, to, to get the funding that comes from the state and federal monies to go equitably mm -hmm. to uh, uh, businesses of color, is is important and of course it's part of the the dei work it just sounds like there there hasn't been enough inquiry as we're finding out um to get them to report out the chamber the town to report out in that way no we need a full racial breakdown so 
Ms. Young, is there a way to give more guidance on that and asking for this information from finance? Oh, you're, you're mute. It's, it's my understanding. Can you hear me now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. It's my understanding that um, each time we've placed a request to the finance, it's been directly as it was asked in this setting. So, um, I mean, I, I'm sure I, I'm scheduled to have a conversation with Sean about my own budgeting process next week. I'm happy to raise the question again and ask if there is the capacity to have more detail. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know what, I haven't reviewed the form, so I don't know whether they're, what, what's being asked on them. And I know that, um, uh, that when Jen asked for this information, the last, um, you know, time that she did, that the information wasn't available from the bid, um, or, and I don't know why, um, but the question was asked um, in regards to everything that you asked for from the prior uh, meeting. Um, okay, thank you. So, Dorothy has, hold up, uh, Ms. Pat, one moment. Dorothy uh, has her hand up. Can someone allow her to speak, please? Yes, Dorothy. Um, okay. Oh, no, you just muted yourself. Okay. I think that's a good question to ask. Uh, the question is outreach. When outreach is done, is it to only members of the chamber and the bid, or is it to all of the businesses in town? Perhaps we should ask for some clarification on outreach, particularly for the ARPA funds. That's my comment. Thank you. Thank you so much. I also want to say the whole process I really have issues with. Why on earth will the town give it to bid powerful group to distribute money? I think we, we're calling ourselves as inclusive anti-racist community. It's just common sense that a committee of business owners could have been set up to deal with the funds allocated to, to a business community to have representation from all races and type of business. No, it went to bid. And they'll give it to the people that they work with. That's the way things work here. People who have easy access. So Ms. Pat, so, so, I think, yeah. So the process is flawed. Yes. We should not be giving bid and chip out of commerce because not everybody like Councilor of Dorothy just pointed out, not everybody belongs to Chamber of Commerce. Right. And so people will just assume that, you know, because they're not member, they, you know, they're not eligible to apply. So I have issues with that. I would really like to see things change in this town and not business as usual. Yeah. We need to, you know, shake things up a little bit. We still have $2 million of upper fund left. Okay. And we don't have youth center. I like some of the money to go to also to business of color in this town who are really, really struggling yeah. that impacted by COVID pandemic. In fact, that is a commission set up by the state to get input from different municipalities of how the upper fund has been utilized. And if, the, if our town doesn't do the right thing, I think it, it will be the responsibility of this, this uh, body you know, to raise concern on state level because this is tax dollars money and some people are hurting. Some people are on the verge of going out of business when there is really, you know, some help for them. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. It, it really is an important uh, topic in bringing entrepreneurs and supporting uh, business owners here. Um, Ms. Young, knowing, you know, DEI is, is in need of another person there, uh, within the capacity of your office, is there any interaction 
with the business community, particularly the chamber and the bid. And then we'll go to Phil. I'm not I'm not skipping you. I just I want to ask this follow up question. So I had um, preliminary meetings with both members of the Chamber of Commerce and the bid and um, um, had some very preliminary discussions um, because Jen is on the Chamber's um, Diversity and Equity Task Force, for lack of a, for, I'm not sure of the proper title, but for lack, uh -huh. lack of a better word. So she had some discussions about ways in which they might diversify and increase their membership. Uh -huh. And within the town, we've all, um, um, Sean attended a support, supplier diversity uh, training that was done by the Commonwealth. And he and I have had conversations about uh, possibly hosting an event so that we could get uh, businesses within the community uh, you know, uh, state certified. So that would allow them to be on the list of approved vendors for our municipalities within the state. So there's been some preliminary <clears throat> work along those lines, but it hasn't moved um, very far. Okay. So, you know, I think this is something where a Miss Pat, who, you know, is a business owner, was a business owner in the town, has some experience. I've also been to those supplier diversity workshops because I'm a black woman business owner yeah. and they only go so far if your own town or municipality um, doesn't do the outreach or makes it difficult for you to be hired yeah. uh, in, in any capacity. Okay. So, um, you know, it's only so much those workshops do. Mm -hmm. But having someone like a Miss Pat, who has had experience in this town, knows the minority owned business owners, you know, doesn't have to be Miss Pat, she has enough to do, but someone in, you know, with that skill set and to pay them, even if it's part time to go and do that outreach, because the chamber is, a, is not a, a public entity. No. You know, so that it becomes problematic in, in terms of equity. So um, just some thoughts. And, and I think we're going to have to revisit this and maybe devote a whole meeting to it, because I, I, I think it's really important. Yes. Uh, Phil. Yeah, I just have a point of clarity because I just looked at the application right now. And so it says that gender and uh, race and ethnicity are on the application, but it is optional to fill out on the application, so there's that piece. And then uh, while looking at the website, I just wanna bring up an inequity that I found under their language point. It is translated in Spanish to access the application, but once you get onto the actual application, it's still in English. So even if you were a Spanish speaker, you would access it, but then not be able to fill it out if, you, if English was not your first language. Wow. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Phil. Just, just that is, is like a whole piece on access and equity. Um, yeah, I think we're going to have to, um, in, in once January comes, like schedule a whole meeting just about this and maybe invite some of these business owners, Ms. Pat. That will come. Um, yeah, that, that you have been in touch with because it sounds already like there's a diverse array there. Um, that's totally elucidating, <laughs> Phil, thanks. Um, all right, so any other comments about <clears throat> ARPA funding uh, and vendors to the uh, police and uh, that type of thing. Sounds like we already got our work cut out for us in terms of budget advocacy and town manager goals. The other thing was a report from youth and we might so, be out here by 9.30. Okay, so just two minutes, very quickly. You know, the incident July 5th is like onions, peeling it. It's like there's so many moving parts. And so the, the, the BIPOC youth and their families really, really want to take their time, such as the post issue that just came up re recently. So the report will be ready, but I'm not giving like 
the um, specific month that we would be because I saw many moving parts. So, so much. Got you. Yeah. Thank you for working on that though. Um, just to revisit, Ms. Pat is uh, doing um, a report where she's including um, not only the letters from the parents, but uh, the youth uh, as well in, in the CSSJC version of the report. So thank you. So we're looking at January. Um, January, we're yeah. hoping, if it's yeah. not, I'll let you guys know in advance, but right. it's going to be comprehensive. Um, and it will be a gift to our town. It will be donated to the local libraries because history does matter. Absolutely. The July 5th has defined to, uh, our, uh, our town in 2022. There's no arguing about that. And so we need to document it from the victim's perspective and their families. As mm -hmm. much as it might, you know, it may not be a popular report, but the truth must the be truth. Told. The truth. It has to come out. So the families are taking their time to gather all the pieces from the newspaper, headlines. Everything is going to be put together and put it, take it out there. It will be out there in the public. It's a history document. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We're almost to the end. Um, upcoming agenda items, and <laughs> we have to schedule for uh, January. So it's the, it's the holidays. Um, our folks, Deborah's already said she's not going to be here during January, but um, would people rather midpoint of January or the end of? going towards the end of January is our next meeting. And I could say for me too. <laughs> uh, any other ideas? See the end of January, there's um, a Wednesday the 25th. When does HRC meet again? We don't want to conflict with you. The third Wednesday, so we'd meet on the 18th. So the 25th could work for. Okay, that works okay. for me. All right, so the 25th of January. Are we all good with that? Oh, yes. Break A, yes. Any other options for the 25th? Well, um, there is. Well, the 18th, the HRC is meeting. And if we meet earlier in January, it's the 11th. If we keep it to the Wednesday. Or, I mean, Thursday, I don't know. I think we had all agreed Wednesdays was better for us. It doesn't matter to me, so. Yeah, I have a feeling I'll be busy on the 25th of January. Oh, okay. Um, so there's Tuesdays the 24th and Thursday is the 26th. Does anyone have a preference? It doesn't matter to me. Okay, so it's either a Tuesday or a Thursday. Well, you're saying you're flying out on the 25th, Freke? Um, I will definitely not be flying. But um, I will definitely be busy on the 25th. Okay. Can you do 24? My preference is any day but the 25th. Oh, okay. Hey, oh, okay. Can you do 24? Two, four. Um, wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Okay, great. There we go. That was easy enough. And that that's good easy. for you, Phil Allegra. Okay. Allegra. Yep. Okay. You're so tired. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it, it's been a lot. All right. Well, that's done. Uh, any other items that were not reasonably anticipated? So I just did want to mention briefly, because I know Lauren Mills had come to public comment last time talking about um, maybe doing listening sessions. And I don't think 
that's a bad idea. In fact, I think it's a good idea. And I was actually thinking not just necessarily about the school, but if we were maybe to outreach with other committees, like for example, housing and do like a joint listening session around housing, maybe transportation access with the lighting situation that's come up. Um, so I just, I thought that might be something we could think about for scheduling maybe in the spring or. Um, I like that. Is there a way for one of us on the committee other than the two co-chairs to, um, you know, uh, outreach to these other committees, these other town committees that might have intersecting, you know, goals or ideas with the CSSJC and find out would they be interested in doing something like that? We already have two natural liaisons, Philip to HRC, and we have Allegra for housing. So well, but, Allegra is a co-chair. <laughs> but you know, problem solved. <laughs> well, Freke or Phil, could y'all do that outreach? Uh, there's housing, there's the HRC. Obviously, HRC is, is logical with Phil, mm -hmm. but there are other committees that are, you know, like uh, transportation, you know? Building think, access. Yes, yes. Um, that is a major issue with the transportation committee. But, I don't mind nominating myself with the knowledge that I probably will not get to this until January. I'm going on vacation for like some time in California. Good for but, you. Good for <laughs> you. Very nice. But I can get to that beginning of the new year. Yeah, that's fine. Because I think we're, we're saying down the road that yeah. we would like to do something like that. So if, if that's okay, uh, Freke, is there a committee you, you might um, would outreach to? If there's a buffet, then could I have a list of what those committees are so I could you know, pick? I'm not sure. You, you said they are some beyond what you've mentioned. So if- Yeah, they're on the town website. So they're on the town website. Town Yes, they're on the town website and just think, you know, synergistically, where do, you know, it might intersect. So transportation, like we mentioned, uh, has to do with a, ability, right, and disability, um, making sure the PVTA, you know, uh, works with folks who have these physical, you know, challenges, um, whereas transportation isn't always opened to them, it, it, it's, it's been documented as a problem in the town. Uh, the senior center, you see, uh, is another one. So- um, if, I, if I may say, uh -huh. I hope I didn't interrupt you. I think Laura Mills is good at stuff like this. You know, if we can reach out to her and said, you know, could you reach out to this group? She would do it. She likes to send emails. And sure, she's not on the up. committee. <laughs> but I can liaison with her and so we discuss her proposal uh, because to me, I'm being hesitant is I, because I know some of the people in, for example, access uh, transportation committee, I know uh -huh. some folks, but that's not the point. I don't want to co you know, contact people. We don't have date. You know, there might be some questions I won't be able to, you know, to answer. Lauren seems to have a good head as to what she wants. So um, I don't think we have too many committees okay. that center around marginalized issues. You know, people, yeah, she can reach out to them. I mean, we covered HRC and Allegra, I don't think you'll mind, you know, mentioning that at housing. I know you're doing a lot already, but, you know, I can reach out. What I'm saying is I'm volunteering to reach out to Lauren Mills and have a discussion with her, you know, and we can brainstorm, you know, groups that she can reach out to. Okay, Miss Pat, that's fine. I don't care who does it. I just, yeah. I think, you know, we, we're we the committee though. And it's yeah. great that if you could get Lauren to, you know, to, to help with that, but our committee members, 
you know, should take some of that, if we're interested in doing it, should take some of that responsibility. That's, that's really my point. Um, but so, so how, however it gets done, that's so fine. So when I contact chair of a committee, what did I, what do I tell them? What do I tell them? Like, are what they interested are we looking for after January? Is so it, our February, yeah, our February okay. meeting, our March meeting, you know, those types of things. January is probably going to already be filled, but uh, February, March uh, meeting. So just see if they're interested. And we'll let them know, you know, as we get closer to it, what date. Um, but obviously we've been setting dates uh, for our meetings each after each meeting so it's not like a set date right now so, so just see if they're interested so we're going to be the lead sponsor and then we're soliciting co-sponsors yes from town committees sounds that good way. sounds okay. good sounds great that you already I'm, have I'm your I'm you have your talking in. you have your talking points thank okay. you okay. all right so uh great meeting um any other topics public comment <laughs> oh yeah i know oh, oh, okay. uh, what well why is it's not even written into here where's our public comment why is it down there okay yes Thank you of, for your patience of course public comment hello vera hi hi right. can you hear me yeah absolutely okay vera cage 12 long middle drug immersed um I want to speak to the public records request that came back that the uh, Amherst police or there have been no complaints um, from the police department or any other entities to post around um, police uh, complaint. Um, so I wanted to find out from the town why that didn't happen um or if it got submitted and maybe post has it wrong um but i think that that's such an important issue to figure out because it sort of confirms people's belief not to trust the police um if they can't directly come out and say no, we didn't file, or yes, we did, and post made a mistake. So we need to figure out, you know, where where the holes are, um, and and I hope that the town council is a, should be made aware of this. Um, the town manager, of course, um, I would hope that there should be a complaint against the police chief if in fact his department did not report to post. Um, and and I, I think the, the post agency should should address that, you know, what, what happens to, to um, police departments that aren't in compliance with, with the law. Um, so I'll, I'll leave my comments at that. Um, at the prior town council meeting where um, the different motions were discussed, um, I had the impression that the town manager, the police chief, um, or that the town manager thought that imposing, it would be an imposition to do um, anti-racist trainings um, without their engagement. Um, and I, I thought if there, you know, was curious about these trainings that they've had um, and what topics were covered. And it, it appears, you know, um, Romney Associates back in the fall of 2020 um, was paid $14,000 to do a diversity training with the police department. Um, and this was a sole source procurement. So it wasn't, you know, a bidding process or anything like that. So I just wanted to share that as well. Um, I think they billed for 20,000 and I believe Amherst College kicked in you know the six thousand. Um, clearly, that that event was not enough, um, or that we're wasting our time and energy around focusing on changing the police because you know they've always insisted that they've been following protocol 
um, and and the the public may feel that they have been violated, but the police keep saying they're just following their own practices and protocol, and they're not doing anything out of compliance with their own rules. Um, so I think that we definitely need to keep centering the 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 groups of people that have been adversely impacted by the police um, and their conduct, and 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 how much of a resource hog that they are in this town, you know? Um, so three people, three officers have been, are now with the department. Those are additional people. Um, and yet Crest is struggling with keeping up with the demands of our, of our reality. Um, so let's really focus on putting resources to the communities that are adversely impacted and not to the police. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Vera. Anyone else for public comment? Okay. Okay. Um, that's all on our agenda. Does anyone want to make a motion? I move to end the meeting. <laughs> so move to adjourn. Anyone seconds? Second. We have a second. All in favor? Yeah. Bye. Happy holidays. Merry Bye. Christmas. We Happy just need Christmas. to state the time for oh, it the is 939. We adjourn. <laughs> Thank have you. Have a great so holiday, much. everyone. Yes. See you next year. Real quick, Pam, um, how is Jennifer going to post this meeting, the recording, or will you post it? So it's my understanding um, that the meetings are automatic, that there's a system in place. To oh, it's automatic automatically. Okay. Post, I just want to make sure to get notes. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate um, that. If, um, if it's not posted automatically, then Jennifer will, um, I don't know whether her schedule is today it takes i think there's a little bit of delay in getting yeah 24 40, hours right yeah. so it will right. be posted probably by friday at the latest okay thank you so much thank you everyone for committing to this work and i do hope y'all spend quality time with your friends and family and be safe and look forward to working with you in january bye thank you for sharing right, very you. good job good job good job <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Good, job. Good night.